I'm Alec Hansen here in Miramar, Florida, about to spend the day with Eduardo Correa, giving him a marketing makeover. This is brand new. Look like it's time to rise and get in the game. Gonna change some branding, not afraid to fly. I can't even wait to finally touch down with the camera click. Let's light up that stage. Time to start your brand new golden. Good news and bad news. Okay. The bad news. <laughs> you trust this guy at all? The bad news is there are no realtors. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. There, there are no realtors for you. I mean, there's plenty of realtors, but not today. They're not here. They're not. They're, here. Not, they're, not, here. Okay. they're not here. They're somewhere out in the ether. The good news is we believe in you. I believe in you. And so um, I had to pick someone that I want to bring up and take their their game to the next level. And you came to mind. So okay. we brought the whole team here. And whether you like it or not, because <laughs> I know you don't, we're going to revamp your social media. And we got the, the magician here, Alec Hansen. Yeah. Okay. And that's, like, I that's, hate that's this. the plan. I'm sorry I lied to you, but I knew if I told you if I told you this, you wouldn't come. <laughs> All right, now that I've officially just cornered you, terrified you put the huge lights on your face. We're gonna talk about you for like, okay. as long as it takes. So we were just rapping a little bit in there about your story um, and how you got into lending. So let's, let's, let's start there. How did you find this crazy industry? Um, okay, before I was going to lending, I was working in Wells Fargo. I was a personal banker. How'd you find your way to Wells Fargo? I was working in sales, uh, I was selling cars. Selling cars? Yes. Okay, what okay. Kind of Every kind. Really? Yeah, I was <laughs> I was working at Ford, but I was I was selling also um, used cars, so yeah, any kind. I did it for two years. Before that, uh, I was working as a concierge uh, for a luxury condominium for about about two more years, and then yeah. yeah, that's it. And so, when did you come to the states? Nine years ago. Nine years ago. Yeah. Sounds like there's a story there. It is. It is. I was born and raised in Cuba. Um, when I was about 26 years old, I decided to come to the United States. Okay. But since um, there's like kind of embargo in between this Cuba and, and the United States, yeah. I couldn't come straight. So I had to go from uh, from Cuba to Ecuador and yeah. then crossing like nine countries to come here. It was about 9,000 miles or Jeez. something like that. Yeah. How long did that take? It took me 28 days. Yeah, that's real. So 14 days. Um, it was 14 days moving, and in between it was like all together 28 days. What, what made you decide to come? Uh, opportunities. Yeah. So there is not too many opportunities in Cuba for you to, yeah. to grow and, you know, buy a house, buy a car, and having a family. Yeah. It's, it's very hard in Cuba, so that's the reason why I decided to come here. That's awesome, man. That's uh, rad. Yeah. And now, and now you're killing it. I'm trying. Yeah, well, I mean, I was talking to Mario, <laughs> and he's like, you, you, you really stepped up your game. So how did you find your way to Lone Depot from what, Wells Fargo? I always wanted to go to the mortgages because um, uh, my background, I have like a, I like numbers. Um, yeah. I was an accountant in Cuba, so yeah. um, I don't know. I had a friend that he was into the mortgages. He told me how it works, uh, and then I liked it. So. <laughs> That's why I went to the car because he told me you have to have like a, uh, some, some sort of a, like sales experience to, in order to, to go into the mortgages. Sure. So I went to um, selling cars. Then I wanted to go to something in, in like has something to do with finance. Yeah. So then I moved to Walls and then uh, I started to get the, the license to, to pass the test. Yeah. And I did it and they gave me the opportunity here and then that's it. I'm here in Lone Depot. That's awesome. It's dude. been two years and a half, and yeah. I love every minute. That's so great, dude. That's a crazy story, man. And uh, English is obviously a second language? Yes. Well, uh, uh, the third language, but yeah. Well, what's the third language? What's the third, three languages? Uh, well, I spoke uh, Russian, but I don't remember. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <I s> <laughs> that's that's yeah. wild. <laughs> you just learned and forgot Russian. Yeah, I forgot. Because I never got the chance to, like, to write it. Yeah. That's wild, dude. Well. Let's talk about your business, Eduardo, and uh, 
Let, let's first start with kind of some of the basics, which is, you know, I got the intent that you wanted to get into finance, but why? Well, I mean, there's a million things to do. So what, what drew you to, the, to, to finance? I just didn't want to go and like be an electrician. Yeah, you felt like yeah. you wanted to mess around with money. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> I mean, the closer you are to money, the more you understand it, all yeah. that fun stuff. I, I get it. Sure. Okay. What keeps you in this business? Um, trying to help people to find a... Uh, because this is the American dream to having like your home is part of it. 100%. So that's one, and the reason, like just for me to know that somebody's buying a house and I'm helping them, that's that's the best. Yeah. So it's not about also the money, but also knowing that I'm help, help, helping people yeah. to get into the houses. Yeah. So. Let, let me ask you some questions then on that, uh, on that line. Um, the, I wrote them down in, in a particular order so that we can kind of really get through this. Um, all right, so, so let's start with high level. If I were to ask the realtors you work with or the customers that you've worked with to describe you and give me some words to describe you, what, do, what would you hope they would say? I have no idea. Well, I mean, so you're obviously <laughs> I can tell you have a huge heart for people. You're, you're, the first thing you said was, you know, just the, the joy of helping people obviously speaks to you. So if they were to, to have to give me a word to describe you, what, what would you hope they would say? I would say that, he, that I would never give up. I love that. Yeah. So I will fight the loan to get it approved. Like, you don't know. I wouldn't sleep. I don't sleep if I don't. Well, wh why, why do you feel that way, though? I mean, some people don't feel that way. You, you got to know that, right? Like some people, when they're doing their business, it's like they don't care. I do. What, 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 what drives that, you know? It's, it's just, it's isn't me. It's... it's I have to, if I, if I give a pre-approval to somebody, it's because I know I'm going to get it done. And, and that's the way that I'm, you know, I, I don't want to have a, like a declining or something like that. That's not going to happen. <laughs> 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 well, we're going to unpack that because there's something, there's something in your tenacity or your drive that is part of your integrity um, that's, that's obviously a big deal to you. Um, so what, what's important to you? about how you run your business. You know, to say it a different way, because I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm hearing your, the energy you have behind, like, you don't sleep, if you can't, you know, like your, your tenacity, your drive. Um, what's important to you about how you run your business? I, have, I don't have an answer. <laughs> well, so, so. so let me ask you this way. Um, why? Do you continue to do what you do here? Because I, I don't know. It's, it's in me. It's, I, I just don't give up on anything. So wh where does that come from? I think it's from my experience through my whole life. Yeah. So I've been all, always a hustler. Um, and that's the way I am. So if I want to do something, I want to also be the best. I, I know that it, it takes a long time to do it, but I'm trying always to, to not all also be the best, you know, be my best. That's so an interesting comment. That's an interesting thing. Um, you know, so what, what, what drives you to want to be the best you can be? Do, do you know? I just don't want to, like, somebody point at me, like, you told me something and you never did it. Yeah. That's what I think. Um... It sounds like you've had your share of hardship in your life, and I can feel that coming through in how you run your business, in, in the integrity you stand for, in the tenacity you show, in your drive to help your customers. Um, what, what's the end game? Have, have you thought forward a little bit into your career? Like, wh where do you want to go, and where do you want to take stuff, and what's your, what's your end game? So far, no, I'm just Day keep going, time. yeah, I'm just going with the flow, trying to get everything done, and end game will be, I don't know, like, keep doing mortgages. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting, because, I mean, obviously, you wake up every day, and there's a grind in our business, right? It, it's, it's hard, and it can be tiring and fatiguing and all that stuff, right? So, what, what do you think keeps you going? The way I am. <laughs> <laughs> There is no like a real reason why I should stop doing this, and 
I'm just going to keep going. I love it, dude. Let me show you something. So one of the reasons we're going through this is because in, in, in brand building or, or personal brand development or identifying all these buzzwords, the core of that stuff is being able to tap into your authentic self. Um, I, I'm sure you've seen people who, when they market themselves, they market their business, they come across as fake, they come across as cheesy, they come across as uh, annoying, you know, out in the business today. And a lot of that is because they, they, they don't know how to really be themselves. And so they think that they have to put on a mask to go out and sell or become who they want to become. You've seen people like that? Yeah, yeah. All, all the time. Oh, I mean, look, you, you see them like that even in, in walking around, whether they're selling anything or not. You know, the mask that people wear is pretty prevalent. And the goal of this segment, and, and in my opinion, personal brand, um, is, is unleashing really just more of who you are. Because there's an old saying in lending and in, in all sales that people do business with people that they like and that they know and that they trust. And so in order to gain trust with somebody, you've got to have some level of real connection or else, you know, you might know somebody, but you don't necessarily like or trust them. And that's the goal of today is just helping peel back some stuff about who you are so that you're able to more clearly, like a great example, if I had to ask you today, why should I do business with you? What's your answer? Because I will get it done. <laughs> so this is the onion, right? I will get it done. And then if I ask why, not how, I know how you'd get it done. You do a loan for me and you do it well. Because I would not give up on you. So never give up. Why? Because that's how I am. <laughs> I know it is, but you're not wrong. It is how it is who you are. And here's the interesting part of, of letting yourself out or, 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 or trying to carve into this is the, re, the, the, the truth is in, is, is it, of course it is who you are. Of course it is who you are, but who we are is, is effectively who we have decided to be based on values that are important to us. That's right. And that, and that we've developed over time. So things have happened. And I, we don't need to unpack those today, but my, my, my insight to you is things have happened to you and for you that you have decided that have become pillars of your personality and are very important to you. And I can hear them in your words like integrity and never give up and all these things that you, you share. That's part of, that is part of your soul now. And it's like expressing who you are. As we keep asking why, it gives you a chance to go down and say, well, what's, what, when and what happened? When and what happened have made this so important to me? And I, you don't need to share. My, my point is that's what every human has. And as we, un as we unpack that, that gives us the chance to share more truth of ourselves to others. And the more truth you can share of yourself to others, the more connection ha happens. Make sense? Let me give you an example. So you went through something pretty incredible to get to hear from Cuba. So. Have you met anybody else who's done the same thing? Yeah. Is there like an immediate connection? Yeah. I mean, a, a shared journey, a shared hardship, a shared experience, immediately you and that person probably have a similar language to speak to each other. Mm -hmm. If someone, ha if, if I have never done that, in my, if I've ever gone through anything like that, we can share other truths, but that one thing we can't have. Does that make sense? That's right. So in marketing, it's about letting those truths out in smart, intentional, thoughtful ways, because all that does is create real human connection with other people. Um, another easy example, right? You speak Spanish. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So when you meet other people who speak Spanish, is there a level of comfort and connection? Yeah. Immediately, right? Yeah. Uh, immediately. It's like you don't even know this person, but they speak Spanish, you speak Spanish, immediate connection. That's the kind of stuff, like, that, that's another surface level example of how when you, when you look for connection points and you let that stuff out, people immediately connect to you. And so I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna play with this. This is a model of understanding brands. But the reason that we're gonna talk about it in this context is because I think it's gonna help you and give you some ideas on how to, how to define yourself. The, 
in talking about personal brands and corporate brands, there's obviously a distinction. These aren't humans. You are a human. Humans are multifaceted. You have different things you like, different things you dislike, like a thousand other humans. But this, this walking you through this will be helpful because I think it'll give you a, uh, an idea of how to continue to put yourself into a place where people can understand you easiest. Let's, let's, let's look at this. So you see the first one, Outlaw? Mm -hmm. So the Outlaw brand, and I'll kind of try to zoom in here a little bit so we can see it too. Rules are made to be broken. Outlaw brands are disruptive, rebellious, combative a little bit. Um, they have a little uh, brand message here. You don't have to settle for status quo, demand more, go out and get it. And, you know, of course, like Harley Davidson motorcycles is an outlaw brand. Can you kind of feel that? Like if you're on a Harley, you're riding around, you're kind of like you're a cowboy, right? And then you have the magician. This is like the Disney brand. So this is like this magical, it can happen type of, of, a, of a brand where if you bump into it, it's like anything can happen, anything's possible, you know, abracadabra, a little bit of fun. Um, then you have the hero brand. And this is like, my, the best is Nike in my opinion, but this is like the, the you can do it, you can make it happen, self-empowerment, just do it type of a, a brand. And so even, so there's, there's a ton of these things, right? As you kind of go through these, there's, uh, the jester, the everyman, the caregiver, the ruler, which is like Rolex or Mercedes Benz and all these things. And the point of showing you these and kind of talking about them is you start to get an idea of how these companies fit into these archetypes. And the, the, the strategy or the thought that I want you to kind of play with on this is where do you think you fall in this world? I mean, so just look at these names, just the high level names. You have the explorer who's about freedom, don't fence me in. You have the sage, who is kind of like a, like Yoda. You know, it's like, it's like just the, the mentor. Like, I'll, I'll help you. I will explain things to you. Um, you've got the, the, the everyman, which is like, I'm just like you. Like, you're me, I'm you, we're the same. Um, obviously the jester, you've seen some marketing and some people that are the jester because they're doing the TikTok dances. These are the ridiculous people who are like making fun of everything and like, you've seen these people, right? And by the way, so you look at these at a high level and you try to map it to mortgage and all the stuff we do, but the, the reality is, is that people connect with people they like, know, and trust. And so I used to make fun of people who would dance on TikTok. I, I used to be like, That's a, you don't take your job seriously, like you're a clown. And yet they attract all these people who just realize and want to have fun with life. And so just as you look at all these, what, what do these stand out to you? I think between this one and this one. The magician and the hero? Yeah. Why? Cause I'm just curious. If you There's no wrong I answer. I always say to my customer that the, the, if you want to buy, you definitely want to buy. It's, 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 on, it's on you. It's, if you have the faith that you really want a house, we are going to make it happen. Really? Yeah. Um, is, that what, is that the magician, the power of like, what yeah. if? It's, what do you mean the power of what if like? Well, like the magician is kind of this like we can make anything happen. And you know, it, 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 it was interesting to hear you say that to people. So do you actually ask customers that question? Yeah. Do you I really want to do it? It's if you want it, that's a ton deal. How do they react to that question? Let's make it happen. They get excited? Yeah. Interesting. And, and even though if, if it's not today, we are going to prepare you to buy maybe in six months, in a year, in two years. Yeah. But I never say no to them. Even though if I see that the credit score is not good enough or they don't have a big down payment or their income is not sufficient today, um, I will encourage, not encourage them, but I did not, I would not discourage them to buy a house. Yeah. So the good thing is you are here. That's the first step. Um, we got it done. We got it through the, through the finish line. Walk me through your, like parts of your client consultation. Like what, what questions do you ask clients? Um, like the beginning is just I'm, I'm not even asking questions. It's just get to know them. Yeah. And that's I just it's like a talk like you and I have. Yeah. And then we start going into go with the flow. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> what what made you think of the hero a little bit? Because sometimes it's their their hard loans. Yeah. I don't I don't get uh, this. Um, I don't know two hundred thousand um, dollars income with a hundred credit score. And you, you, you have to 
you have imagination to to make the deal happen. So you mentioned you say you get hard loans. Yeah. Why do you get hard loans? I think it's because of maybe the realtors I have that they've referred uh, those uh, customers to me. Yeah. That probably because most of them are Hispanic. Yeah. And sometimes they are not knowledgeable. Sure. Or they don't realize how uh, mm, important have is having like a good credit. Sure. So that's basically what the reason why it, I, I I get this type of customers. Yeah, maybe it's because you're the best person for them to talk to. I mean, somebody who never gives up on anybody, who doesn't say no to anybody, who works tirelessly on people's behalf, who believes in them, maybe when they don't believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you're the right person for hard loans. I don't know, maybe there'd be somebody else who would just pass on those people. I would not. Um, why? Like I said, uh, it's just if they wanna if they wanna buy this is like the American dream. So they wanna buy the house. They they really because uh, we share the same. For example, my most of my people most, most of the people that buys houses from me they're Cuban as well. Okay. So we do know what happens in Cuba. What happens in Cuba right now? So they they don't have. Um, they have never had the experience of buying a house. Yeah. They they are like they have no hope in Cuba. So for people who are already here in the United States um, and they are working their way up uh -huh. to to being like a real person because in Cuba you are not you are not. Um, why, why are you not? Okay, so just 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 for give you an example um they are doctors who makes who make 30 dollars a month yeah and they are doctors so with 30 dollars a month you, you don't get to go anywhere yeah so um final question area ish thing uh you're killing it by the way <laughs> no, I told you, yeah i'm you're doing killing. my best <laughs> Let's, this, is a, this is a hard question because people have to, so for some people it's, it's, it's hard to go there. Um, but I want to talk about legacy for a minute. Le you know, a big, big word. You know, what, what, what you leave behind when it's all done. Um, a family. Well, so I hope so. But my, my question really is, uh, what, what do you want them to say about you at the end? Not the best. <laughs> what does that mean to you though? I love that. If I, I freaking love it. If I will, I will tell you that this is what I always try to do. If if I'm if I'm getting done, if I I will let um, something in the, in them that if they know somebody who wants to buy a house, they not only refer it to me, they make them call me. And yep. and and it and they and they told them, this is the guy to trust. This is. If you want to buy this, we do it with them. Wrap it up with this. Um, again, it's 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 this is a hard question. So do your best. We're talking end of your career, right? You're done. You're done with lending. It, you're however old you are, and you got your some of your clients there. You got your family there. You got people, maybe your mentors that are there, and they're all saying, you know, well done, right? They're all doing cheers and and toasts. Um, what would you hope they say about you at the end of your career? I was a good friend. Um, that I'm always reachable. I was always reachable. Um, I don't know, actually. 
but I always try my best to help him in any ways possible, even though it's not, if it's not, if it's not finance, if it has nothing to do with what I'm doing, I, I, I always help him. Yeah. All right, we did it. Oh yeah. Well done, sir. <laughs> well done, buddy. And movie magic, new location, <laughs> super magic, welcome. We moved like five feet. It's really mm -hmm. amazing, but they don't know that. So, Eduardo, today, uh, and after we kind of, uh, by the way, dude, uh, I, I learned so much about you. We're going to talk about it, but thanks for sharing part of your story with me, man. Thanks. Um, we're going to talk social media. So, social media sucks, but it's also very important. And I think that social media, uh, people believe social media sucks because they haven't framed it appropriately. Because there's a lot of toxicity in social media, there's a lot of weirdness in social media, but there's a lot of opportunity in social media. So let's first start with, in this segment, um, what are your thoughts on social media? Let's just hit me with it. No, that's a must. You have to, you have, to have social media, you have to you know, share your uh, experiences with your, every, every loan you do to see if you can get more customers, but I really don't do it. I, yes, okay, good, I was gonna say, it's a must. Much. And then, so, so this is our social media audit segment where normally I would put up all of your social media and we would talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I found, I found this. this. This is you, right? Yes. You look good, dude, you look sharp. Thanks, man. Uh, do you have any other social media pages? Uh, Instagram. You do have an Instagram? And Facebook, yeah. Oh my gosh, I couldn't find it. Let's find it right now. What's your handle? You gotta think. You gotta yeah, think about I don't. Because I think it's with my first. It's Eddie. Okay, hold on. Hold e on. E D D Y. Search bars. It. Doing something weird. Movie magic back again. It's incredible that we film this and then and Meta just goes down the second we're like literally no joke. We spent thirty minutes just now off camera trying to get Meta to work and uh, I called Zuck. It didn't go through. All right, social media. So you made a comment, let's go right back to it. It's important, you don't do it. Let's talk about why you don't do it. I just don't know how to start. Okay. Um, if you had to guess where to start, what would you think you would have to do? Posting something. Fair. Um, okay, so let's, let's, let's hit it from the basics. Because uh, I think it's really important for you to think about understanding social media differently maybe, which will help you build a strategy around it. So from an audit perspective, um, the team's gonna come through and do a ton of work here. So when initially on social media, you're using it as a place to maintain or make human connection. Maintain or make human connection. And so if you think about that from a marketing perspective, the job is to stay top of mind with people or to find new people and share what you do, right? If they don't, if no one knows what you do and what you, if you're here, then it's hard to get loans. So the first thing we have to do though, is we have to make the look and feel of this match who you really are. And that's where people make the first mistake on social media. So even as simple as your headshot, they have different headshots on different platforms. That's not going to work. It's like, it's hard to find who you are if I'm seeing different versions of you all over the place. So we have to kind of sink into some continuity, make sure your headshot shows really who you are. And then from there, it's the opportunity to show more of your personality. So one of the other mistakes you'll make, like on this one, is there's no banner, right? There's no, that, that whole gray bar is an opportunity. You don't have to use it, but when we dive into it and you put your own personality into it, the second someone sees that stuff, they get a chance to do what? Connect with you. Interactive. Yeah, they, they, like they get to see some of your personality there. And that's, you know, as a marketer, I cringe because we make banners for people and it's got like a Lone Depot on it. It's, I love it. I, I'm wearing the shirt. I love Lone Depot. But there's no chance for anybody to see my personality if it just says Lone Depot on the top. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we're going to clean that up, help you showcase your personality through it. Um, but then people forget that social media is a two-way street. So back to the banner. We need to have something that showcases your personality because the first thing someone sees in your social media is what you choose to show them. And that's where people make their first mistake is they don't choose to show their personality. So we're gonna help clean that up for you. Now, the second 
biggest piece of social media to understand is that it's a two-way street. So when your first response was to post something, it's a, I said that's fair, but that's actually the third thing to do. The second thing to do is to go connect to people. And that's what people make the mistake on. So let, let me, let's, let's, let's unpack this and give an example. Um, what do you do today to go after realtors? Following up with my realtors and ask them for referrals. Yeah, and how do you do that? I mean, like, dumb it down. What do you, what do? You do? Just calling them. You call them, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. so they're, li they're living their life, and you, c you interrupt it and call them. It's the same principle with social media. If you just put a post out in the world and you make a great video or write, write something cool or give some good advice, who's going to see it? Potentially, only the people you're connected with. But if you're not connected with any of these people, you don't see it. So this is where people make the first, like the second mistake on social media is they spend more time just posting random stuff with no strategy, which we're going to fix. But they forget that they need to actually like go out and be intentional and connect to people. And so one of the things that we're going to talk about in the later segment on strategy on this is once we clean up your social, once it's presented well, once it's everything's in the right, you have the right bio, you have the right links, you have the right pictures, and the, the presentation is, is you. Then we get into the strategy of how to use social media as a tool. And that's going to involve finding people, connecting people, engaging with people, and we're going to walk through all that this afternoon. But does that make sense? So when we choose to change your banner and when we choose to change your bio and we really start to mess in all this, the objective is to give people a look into who you are. And that's why we did the, full, the whole first segment because your ability to tap into who you are and what you care about is what we want people to see. Does that make sense? Kind of? Yes. Okay. So, for example, as kind of digging into what we just dug in through for like 45 minutes, you are clearly someone who has a heart for other people. So when we bump into your social media, we need people to see that in the first few seconds of looking at your page. And that's what this audit and that's what the team's going to do for you behind the scenes. Does that make sense? Completely. Okay. So. What else is holding you back from social media? Because hey, I'll be honest, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a, a truth. You, you didn't need me to tell you any of this stuff. If you wanted to go figure it out, you could have used the Google. You could have... I'm just lazy. Man. Uh, la I, yeah. There we go. <laughs> but, but you're not lazy. In that regards, yeah. <laughs> but so let's peel back the onion a little bit. Like, why do you feel like you're lazy in this regard? Because you're not lazy in other areas. You obviously work very hard. Just, just, I don't know. I don't know how to start and then and just keep it that way. Okay. So when we film videos later today, any feelings about that? No? Just totally ready? Yeah. In control? Yeah. Easy? Mm -hmm. No insecurities? No fears? Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> but finally, finally I got like the real uh, Eduardo to come out a little bit. So... <laughs> You didn't offer this up, but let me share some thoughts and advice on social media. I think there's another reason people avoid social media. And I think it's because they don't like getting into a position of vulnerability, potentially. They, they don't like to feel like they're exposed or like somebody's going to like tear them down or judge them or think that they don't know what they're doing. And so there's a lot of barriers. Yeah, that might be me. It, uh, That's it, it's a, yeah. By the way, it, it, the reason I know this is because it's everybody. Like, you're not, you're not immune. You have the same issue everyone else has, which is this putting yourself out there feels terrible, feels very vulnerable. And who's going to see it? And what are they going to think? And all those things start to come up. And so we can do the best. Like, my team will do an incredible job reskinning this, making it look really solid and professional and personal and powerful. But then when we film content later today, that's the opportunity you have to really dig deep. So I'm gonna kind of blend a little two segments today because there wasn't a lot to go through in an audit perspective and mm -hmm. Meta was down. But here's the opportunity. So you, you say, and you've said repeatedly that you wanna help people, fair? And I could see you as you talked about never saying no and you talked about helping the people with the hard loans, helping a lot of people who are mostly Cuban, you know, the people that are everyone else is kind of giving up on or o overlooking. And you got really passionate about those people. 
I, I assume you want to help as many as you can. And not just because it helps your business, but because it gives you something in here. Is that fair? Mm-hmm. So to do that, you're going to need to get bigger. I mean, you want to help more people, you got to talk to more people. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. So when we start to push you and encourage you and show you how to get bigger and expand your reach and expand your influence, that's going to mean you're going to have to get into a position. What I'm saying is it's going to require you to figure out how to tap into why you do what you do or else you get lazy or else you get unwilling to put yourself out there and make content or do a video because you'll find an excuse. But if you can keep coming back to why you're doing what you're doing and who you're trying to become and who you're trying to serve, you're going to find the, the determination to get uncomfortable. Does that make sense? Do you agree with that at all? Or are you just kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's well, what, do you, what, do you think I, what do you think about what I just said? Um, that, that's, that's a must we have to do, don't we? Because if, yeah, like, like you say, if you uh, arrange everything to be created at a certain point and, I don't, and I, I don't keep doing it or I just don't do it because I'm lazy, then it's worth it. It's not worth it, so yeah. it has no value. But so are you ready to give social media a real try? Yeah. Like consistent, yeah. determined, unstoppable? Mm -hmm. All right. I believe you. Yeah, I'll We're going to put the cameras on. Let's do it. All right, let's make it happen. All right, Marketing Mayhem, we're back. How was Headshots? Easy, Amazing. right? Yeah. Just good looking man. Just photos. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> All right, so this, this is going to be a meaty segment. We're really going to dive in now. We've kind of hit some high-level notes. We've talked about what kind of makes up your brand personality. We're going to kind of unleash that as we get forward here. But let's, let's get really tactical, okay? So in this segment, we're going to go through social, what I call physical, or what we do with our like referral partners, and local. So there's lots of marketing opportunities. And what I want to do right now is go through your entire plan, understand it, and then iterate with you and come up with some new ideas to kind of launch into. So the easiest way to break this down is the work week. We got seven days. Walk me through kind of what your days look like, what do you have structured, what's unstructured, and give me an overview of what Monday through Friday and Saturday, Sunday look like. Wake up in the morning around 7 a.m., okay. 7.30, go to the computer, to the office, and I'm sorry reviewing the obligations. You, okay, so you're at 7.30, you're, you're turning on the email. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I start reviewing the you obligations. You hit the gym, bro? Look at you. you look good. I used to. I'm, oh. I'm going to try to okay. go back I was going to say. Yeah. No, you look good, dude. Okay, Thanks, so man. you start emailing at 7.30. Yes. Okay. Um, about 9, uh, I, I review all the obligations, and I'll go over the, the pipeline. Okay. Pipeline review. Yeah. Yep. From nine to ten. Then after ten, I start work, I start calling my realtors. Okay, so about ten, you're starting to call realtors. Yes. Unpack the strategy for me. Like, what does it look like? First of all, are you here or at home or both? No, I, around I, the home. home yeah. Most mostly at home. Yeah. Okay. Um, who do you? How do you determine who you call? I just go. I have a list of, of realtors. Okay. Um, and I put some notes. When was the last time I spoke to them? And then I have like a reminders. Yep. That's basically what I do. Um, how long do you spend calling agents then? Ten to what? It depends because you, you have more, uh, it depends with the, with the realtor, for example. I have a realtor, I, the most I can speak to that person is maybe 10, 15 minutes because that person is super busy. But there are others that want to talk to you for hours. <laughs> yes, they, yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But basically it's about 20 minutes per. Okay. And how many agents do you call about? In a good day, about six, eight. 68? Okay. Because yeah. I don't want to call them every day. Of course not. So. That's stalking somebody. Yeah, yeah don't do yeah. that. <laughs> um, okay. And then after you make those calls, what do you do? Working on the, lo on the loans. Okay. So then loan work. Yeah. And then you do that till what? End of day? Typically? 
No. W uh, it depends. If I receive a call at uh, 8 p.m., I'm still working on it. Well, uh, for, okay, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's, that's, that's great. That's because that's, that's a given that I shouldn't assume. But like, obviously, while you're calling agents, if a loan comes in, you're going to jump on that client, take care of them, start the application, right? All that good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when do you typically end your day, assuming a client doesn't call? I stay sitting on the, on the office, try to, to do something. So since I'm in home, so I don't have to go nowhere, yeah. I stay there. So yeah. But you can't, you're not about calling seven, agents at 7 10 o'clock at night. Let's say 10, 7 p.m. Okay. If I have nothing else to do, yeah. And, and are you still calling agents that late or, are you, or are you, do you stop calling them around? Around 5. Around 5 you stop calling yeah. them. Okay. And then is this kind of every day? Do you, go out in the, do you go out and visit agents at open houses, previews? You're just dialing for dollars. I don't do any, any of that. How many agents um, on, your, on your calls tend to be cold calls? None of them. At this point, they all know you? Yeah. Okay. And then how did you create your list of agents? Buyers, agents, and sellers. Who gave you, how did no, you, like you get them? Every time I have a contract that I have a purchase, I will I call the, the Good. seller's agent to introduce myself and, and ask them for the uh, email address so I can uh, provide the, the optics on, on the loan. So then I, fo I follow up with them and then that's, that's the way that I have received the. How do you make sure the agents you call actually do business? There's a lot of agents that don't do any business, as you and I know. Yeah. You know, the part-time agents, whatever they're doing. So how do you make sure that they, these are actual producing agents? Um, we have the metal market. Okay, so you are pulling the data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're pulling the data on your list. How many agents are on your list about? I have no idea. I don't count them. Okay. All right. And then anything on the weekends besides clients that call you or you just live in life? No, no, I'm still working. I'm doing the same thing I was, I was, uh, as I was doing on, from Monday to Friday. So you're dialing agents on the weekend too? Check in? If I have to, yeah. Okay. And then we, we Meta came back up. Oh my God. Um, so I, I did see some of your Instagram, some of your posts on there. Looks like you do some of that stuff. Is there any, what, when do you decide to do it or not do it? Well, what you saw on, on Instagram, yeah. the realtor is the one that, that she's like Hold pushing me to, to do it. Good. Cause she's, she's like you guys, she has, um, she likes a lot the social media and she has a few followers about yep. 15,000 followers. So, um, yeah, she's the one that. Okay. Me to. So I got this one down. Um, what do you do if anything for your past clients to stay in touch? And if the answer is no strategy, that's okay. I review the rates and I call them to see if we can do something once in a while. So I, I actually I'm not following up with the with the cool. That's but opportunity. But I do That's know I do, do know that was that Loan Depot does it. We have they, some they stuff. They send the emails and yes. they have replied. We have some stuff. Um, okay. Anything else on a weekly basis or a monthly basis that you do? Not that I remember. Okay. So you're perfect. You you've got a very like. Um, I don't want to call it old school, but I'm going to call it old school. You got a, you got a very old simple school strategy. Style. Yeah, simple's good. I like simple, um, and simple doesn't mean bad. Simple just is what it is. It's just that you know you wake up, you work on files, you call agents, you work on files, you call agents. Right? All good. So there's a, there's a thousands and thousands of loan officers who have a very similar strategy, and I'm going to call it um, you know organic. Okay. And what I mean by organic is, you know, you have this list of agents, right, with your notes. Is it in like an Excel doc or what, how do you store that? In a board. It's on a board? Yeah. It's on a whiteboard. Perfect. So that's, this is as old school as you get. So you've got a board of agents' names and you have notes on them. And basically, when you look up at the board and you go, I haven't talked to this person in a while, you call them up. Does that sound fair? Yeah? So, and... Organic's doing, like, it's, it's, it's helping. It's working. Like, mm -hmm. you're being, because I can tell you're at least consistent to a degree. Um, but there's an opportunity for us to get really strategic. So, or tactical. And that's, that's the opposite of organic. So, organic is, you know, look at the board. Haven't talked to so-and-so in a while. Give them a call. Um, or you look at the board and you go, I call this person every Thursday. Which is which? Do you do? 
The first one. The first one. Yeah. Haven't talked to Joe Blow in a while. I'm calling him up. Okay. So let's let's talk through some opportunities, uh, and let's talk through your realtors first. So I'm going to throw stuff at you, and we're going to build something that you can choose to use or not use. But I want you to really think about it, and and we're taking notes. So if you if you have an idea that sticks with you, I want you to think about it. But let's walk through the foundation of this for to begin. So why do you think a realtor chooses to work with you? Because of, uh, I know what I'm saying, I know what I'm doing. Yep. Um, every time they call me, if I, if I tell them this guy doesn't qualify now, he qualifies later, they do trust me about that. Okay, so you give people the truth, you're available, yeah. you are knowledgeable, all the reasons someone would choose to work with you, right? So then the question is, for agents that aren't using you today, how do you think they're gonna get to know that? It has to be social media. It could be, and and, it, and so I think it's going to be a la- it's going to be op- it's going to be layered opportunity. So let's say there's a uh, hundred on your uh, hundred agents on your list. Now, so by the way, I, I think that let, let's talk about this. Um, you should know how many agents you're going after, and it doesn't mean you need to have it memorized and be like Alec. There's 103 agents I'm going after. Like it doesn't have to be memorized, but the fact that when I asked you about it, you were like, "Ooh, I'm not really sure." It's not five. But is it 100 or is it 20? In the 20s. 20s. Yeah. So the opportunity is to scale up the agents you want to do business with. And so you should do this quarterly. Like quarterly, every, th- every three months, you should repoll the list of the top, let's call it 100 agents in your marketplace. And you should look at that top list every 90 days. And Mellow Market pulls that for you, right? So you can pull it up. And then what you would do is you'd look at the top 100 and you would compare it to the ones you're working with. Where are they on the list? Are they in the top 100 at all? Are they in the, you know, where, where do they fall? Maybe some are in the like highs, some are in the middle. And, and by the way, I'm not, just so we're clear, like I think that some of the best agents in the world are agents closing one deal a month. And people think I'm crazy for that. Why don't you go for the agent that's closing 20 deals a month? And I'm like, the agent that's closing one deal a month is hustling their ass off to close one deal a month. That means they're working with three to five people a month and they're getting escrows going all the time and they're closing one a month. To me, those people are a fantastic lead source. So I'm not saying the top 100 because you need to you know, always work with the agent that does a million deals. Sometimes the agent that's number one is a total jerk. Yeah. <laughs> fair? Yeah. And it's just like, we're not, I'm not, I never wanna work with that person. And that's totally fair too. But I would, every 90 days I'd pull the top 100 and I'd look at your list and I'd, I'd find the people you're working with you got to put them in A, B's, and C's. A's are the people you're working with. B's are the people that know you that you're not working with, and C's are people that don't know you and you're not working with. Does that make sense? And so, once we do that every 90 days, now you have a little more of a strategy around your agents than it's just organic. So you got your A's, B's, and C's, and now the opportunity is okay. Well, the A's know you, and they do business with you. So you need to come up with a strategy for contact with those people, okay? Contact strategy. And you need to challenge yourself to not be so organic. So for example, if you have eight agents that use you and know you all the time, like you're their main guy, then you need to make sure that you're talking to them once a week, minimum. And you need to make sure you talk to them every week, minimum. So it's not organic anymore. You gotta put it on the board and be like, when do I call these people? And, and make sure that it's non-negotiable. Because what's, what's happening with those agents that use you and know you? They're being marketed by somebody else. Mm-hmm. Of course they are. Somebody else is calling them every week. So you have to be proactive. You've gotta figure out how to get in front of them, stay in front of them, ask them how they're doing. And chances are, if, you, if they know you and they're working with you, you have loans together. So you probably have a reason to call them which is to update them on their loans. So let's think about that, but I would tell you that you should pick a day of the week and you should be like, this is when I call all my A's. Now you don't have to do that. You can sprinkle it out. This is, this is your choice on how you want to run your business. This is just my Idea. ideas for you to play with, okay? But you need to have a, a once a week for sure. Now you got your B's and your B's are people that know you, but they may use you, they might not. You might get a deal here or there, but they, they kind of, know you, they don't know you. I mean, they know you, but it's not like consistent. 
or you're trying to like break into them. Like they know you, you call them all the time, but they, they haven't given you any business yet. They're still giving it over here. Those people also need a weekly call, a weekly touch, but you need to make sure that you're, you're doing this with intention. So I hate to be so simplistic, but, but no doubt if you're using whiteboard strategy, check boxes, just straight up. Like I checked them, I called them and then you erase that every week. And then you just, and if you look up and there's no check box, it's like, I got to call them. And that way you're not leaving anything to chance. You're not leaving it to, I, I messed up, or I missed it or whatever. You're intentionally hitting them every single week. Now, if you think a week is too much, modify what I'm saying, change it. Maybe do what's every week and a half, you know, but whatever, but, but here's going back. Let me give you like some of my philosophy on this. In order for someone to trust you, right? They have to get to know you and they have to decide if they like you. That's all a process. It does not happen on one meeting or one call. It does not happen when they see one Facebook video. They're going to trust only comes over time. Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah. So if you're calling them once a month, you're, you're, there's so much time in between those interactions that there's no way you're building a relationship. Like there's no way they're learning to trust you or get to know you because it's just, there's too much time in between. If you call them every day, you're a psychopath and they're going to hang up on you. So you got, you got to find the, the happy medium for you. Um, but for me, I think it's once a week. Okay. So wrestle with that. Think about what you think it is and then build your system. Again, if it's whiteboard, that's fine. Where it's like everyone gets a checkbox every week. And then I erase that line every Monday and I'm back at it. But if you don't see the checkbox up there, you got to make sure you get a call into them. So it's a little more of taking what you're currently doing and adding some intention to it to maximize your business. Make sense? And then you got the C's and these are people that don't know you, right? They don't know you, but you are like, I want that person's business. I think this has to be a monthly at a minimum. And then you can upgrade that to whatever you think, but you know, you got to start somewhere. Now there's social media. We'll talk about that in a second, but like this, this, I think you need to systematize. And so just to kind of hit you with it again, what I would recommend is every 90 days, you pull the top hundred agents. You see where your agents are on the list and you look at your A's and C's in that list. And, and again, some of the top hundred, you might be like garbage, throw out, not worth my time. But as you look at that list, then all of a sudden you go, okay, well, here's my A's and C's. And then what's my contact strategy? How am I going to call them? What am I going to say? How often am I going to call them? And then you build a system where it's like, okay, this is how I operate every week. So for example, if I came back and sat down with you in a month and I was like, how many calls do you make a week? You could be like, Alec, I have eight A's. I got 33 B's. I got 30 C's. And so every week I'm calling all 33 B's and I call all eight A's every week. So I'm making 41 calls a week. That's strategic. That's systematic. That's a business. That's, that's a plan. And I want to encourage you to th look at your model and go, do I want that or not? Because now, now you can be held accountable. Now you can go to Mario and be like, you're going to make sure I call 46 people. You're going to call me on Friday and say, have I made my 46 calls? Now, again, maybe you decide weekly is too much for you. It's not your vibe. It's not your strategy. It's not how you want to come across. Maybe you want to be every once every nine days or something, right? Whatever feels right for you. But I'm telling you, if you're trying to build a relationship with somebody and they need to trust you, you need more contact. Does that make sense? What do you think about all that? Agree, disagree, just I, digesting? I agree a hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Cause now, see now a guy like you who wants to take their business up the next level can decide how much accountability you want to put on yourself. You can decide. I mean, this is what people pay thousands of dollars for coaches for not, not for this, for the coach to call your ass every Friday and be like, did you do the work? That's what people pay the coach for. Cause you could come up with this yourself. You could work on it with Mario. Like this is nothing that's that special. What matters is your ability to say, okay, non-negotiable. Here's how I want Here's how I do my work. All right. Let me layer in something else that I want you to consider face to face. Would you agree that people build relationships well face to face? I mean, that's why we take people on dates. <laughs> I guess that, that, that's how you get the, like you got to get physical, like you got to get face to face. That's, there's a reason for this in, our, in humans. So 
all of these agents are out in the streets. They're holding open houses. They're out at previews. They're at networking events. I would encourage you to think about face-to-face -face adding in a strategy. Here's what it could look like, okay? So you talk about Saturdays and Sundays, right? Let's just, let's just start here. Are your agents holding open houses? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, every market's different. If the market's super hot, they, they don't even have to hold the house open. <laughs> They're getting 75 offers. If the market's colder, there's open houses for seven months and nothing's moving, right? That's fair. But in the medium and in the change of stuff, agents tend to hold houses open. That's just what they do. So let's ask the simple question. Do you think they want to be there? Yeah. No, don't no, lie. They don't want yeah. to be there, mm -hmm. dude. Come on. Like, do they want to sit there? Now, I know some hungry agents are excited. They're like at the houses. They want to meet people. They're trying to get more business by people walkthroughs. Like, so they're hungry. But like, if you had to ask them and people get older, like, no, they want their weekends. Dude. They want to go hang out with their kids or their families and barbecue. They don't want to be sitting at a house for two hours, three hours. But it's unbelievable opportunity. Because if you're hunting the bees and the C's, the people that you really want to open up relationships with that don't know you yet or that you just barely know you, the best thing you can do is walk into their open houses and, and, and show them that you're working. The best thing. I'm convinced of this. Over 22 years, I am more convinced than ever that the best thing you can do to build relationships with agents is to show up when they're working. What do you think about that? Well, this is something that I have to do that I've been slacking because I, I and I think this the reason why I'm not doing the face to face is because I think COVID has had a like a for sure part of it. Of course, Big absolutely. Part. So, so <coughs> when I was working in Wells Fargo, I was a personal banker, so I had interactions every day with, with, with people, yeah. with customers, and this is something that I'm missing now. But I, then you get used to do this. A hundred percent. 100%. So let, let me share with you what I think could be a face-to-face -face strategy for you to play with. Okay. So in your markets right now, there's something called broker previews. Have you heard of that before? No. Nope. Okay. So what a broker preview is, or sometimes they call it a caravan. It's, I don't know what days of the week it is here. We'd have to pull that up. But agents go out and they hold open houses for other agents during the work week. And so back in, in Southern California, in my cities, it was Thursdays and Fridays. In other cities around in Orange County, it's like Wednesdays and Tuesdays. By the way, I was invited to one. Last so you know week. what I'm talking about? Yeah. What, what did the agent say? She just invited me. Yes, they come by, right? Yeah. And what day was it? Do you remember anything about this? I think it was Wednesday. Perfect. So normally, it's from 1 to 4 on Wednesdays, normally, or whatever day it is. And so what you would do hmm. is we would find out what it is in the city, okay? You'd pull your list of 100 agents so you know who you want to go after. You'd go down, you get the list of who's open, and then you go hunting. Make sense? Yeah. Kind of? So, here's the strategy. On Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, you need to go to four to six of these babies. So, if they're holding it from one to four, I'm just, I'm just assuming that's going to be the time, but let's, let's, we'll find out the time. But if they're holding it from one to four on Wednesdays, what you would do is you'd go down to the, either online, they have them online, or at the realtor board. <coughs> you'd get the list of what's open. You'd look at it. You'd see, okay, where are my agents? Where are the ones I'm hunting? Who are the A, Bs, and Cs on this list? Mm -hmm. And then from one to four on Wednesday, you're in your car going and walking into their house. So picture this. Picture this for your realtor strategy. You're calling, you're making 47 calls a week, right? whatever it ends up being. You're calling the C's once a month, and then on Wednesdays from one to four, you're finding them in the street, you're walking into the house that they're selling, and you're just introducing yourself. You're just, hey, Eduardo, good to meet you. I'm hanging out, I just wanted to see how the house is going. We can talk scripts in a minute, but the whole point is you go in there, you make impression, you show them you're working while they're working. What do you think they think about you? I'm a working person. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're gonna immediately associate you with hard work. They're immediately gonna associate you with somebody. If you show up every day, let me give you a story. So, when I was taught this, I uh, was 23. And on Thursday, 
there was a broker preview and this giant agent, one of the biggest agents in Orange County was, had a house. So I'm like, that, I want his business. So at 23, I cruise into his house. He didn't know me. And so I introduced myself. I'm like, oh, it's Alec. Nice to meet you. You know, I'm a lender. How, great house. And he's like, oh, nice to meet you. And he's like, I, I you know, uh, blah, blah. I didn't, that was it. I left. Friday, he had another listing in another city because he's a big agent. And that had an uh, open house. So on Friday, broker preview. So I went there. Hey, Don, Alec, good to meet you. Hey, what's up? Oh, hey, Alec, good to see you. Saturday, open house for actual customers. Put my suit and tie on, rolled in. Sunday, no joke. So this is four days in a row now. He had another open house. So I rolled in. I'm like, Don, Alec, and Don, he, I will never forget this. He looked at me and he was like, are you gonna come into every one of my open houses? Exactly. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I am gonna have a bowel movement. I'm losing, I am so nervous. He's gonna tell me to never come back. That's what I think. He's gonna tell me to stop bothering him. He's gonna tell me like, there's no point in coming in. He works with so-and-so. And so I'm terrified. I'm like, yes. I, and I basically said, Do you, is that okay <laughs> if, I, if I come in? And I'll never forget this. He said, he laughed at me, which was I, like, I was like, oh, thank God. You know, he's like, break the tension. Cause he was pretty hardcore. He was an ex-attorney. He, used to, he litigated in front of the Supreme Court before he became a, a broker, real estate. So this guy's gnarly. He goes, you know what? It took my last loan officer two years to earn my business. Just keep showing up. And I was like, understood. And no, I am not joking. Six months later, almost to the day, I never missed a broker preview. I never missed an open house of his. Even when he wasn't there. Because sometimes, you know, you go to these houses and they have a title rep sitting in or they have another buyer agent sitting in. Or whatever. Even when he wasn't there, I still showed up, dropped off a card, and every single Monday I wrote a handwritten card to every house I visited saying, thanks for visiting. Th thanks for letting me visit your house. Six months to the day, he called me with a client in his office and gave me my first deal. I never, and, 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 and he had worked with a lender for years before me. And I finally earned his trust. Because what happened after all those visits? What do you think happened to him? What do you think was going through his head? Six months of this kid showing up every day or every, you know, once a week at least. What do you think was going through his head? That you want to, you want to, you want his work. This guy's hustling. Yeah, he's hustling. Yeah. This guy, this guy is committed. This guy's consistent. I can rely on this kid because he shows up every time. See, I've learned that the only way to build trust is through consistency. Because none of these agents that you want to break into, the big ones, are going to give you a deal. They're not going to entrust you with a, a, a deal. They're, they're too scared of losing a commission, losing a client, hurting their reputation. They're not going to do it. So the only way you get to build trust with these people is by showing up. And you can do that through your calls. You can do that through your calls. You can call every week and be super consistent. Be like, I hope I'm not bothering you. If I'm bothering you, I'll call you every two weeks. You tell me what works for you, but I'm going to keep calling to let you know that your business matters to me. But you can also do this face-to-face. -face. And I would tell you that you getting face-to-face -face is going to change your business. Make sense? Indeed. So, I think that you need to set a goal for yourself, be strategic, and say on Wednesdays, assuming that's the day, you're going to see four people every Wednesday. Don't be in the office. Don't be at home. Get out and see four people. Does that make sense? Or are we losing battery? We're good. Okay. We're checking, but we're good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you think about that? I don't know. I agree Doable? With you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I would tell you too, depends on how big you want to go, but if you really want to blow your business up, then you put it on the weekends too. Let, let me give you some encouragement or thoughts. If you're willing to sacrifice your weekends from one to four, one to four, on Saturdays and Sundays to go to open houses and visit these agents you want to build business with, if you're willing to sacrifice your weekends for six months, you'll change your career forever. You'll break into those top agents. You'll get new relationships. Your business will double. I'm not joking. But you just got to be willing to put the work in. Does that make sense? So I want you to wrestle with that. I want you to think about it. Is how bad do you want it? 
How, how bad do you really want to great bake to the next level? Super bad. I can tell. I, well, I, look, I mean, look, dude, you go back to your passion about why you're doing all this. And by the way, again, let me be clear. Don't go after the top asshole agents. You want to go after the people that are doing business and that you know that you're going to vibe with. Like you look at them, you look at their social media, you look at their website and you're like, yes, that person. That person is exactly the person I want to work with because they're working with the customers I care about and they're doing the business I know I can do. And so they don't have to be the top 10, but, they, but you want the ones that are doing a lot of business. Mm -hmm. So once you find that list and you're every 90 days, you're looking at that list. I mean, I still have phone numbers of agents that I put into my cell phone because if they ever called me, I want to make sure they knew who was calling me. I put an R dash and their name into my phone and I still have the same, st you can still look at all the R's in my phones because I was like, if they ever call me, I got to make sure no matter what I'm doing, I answer that phone call. Remember that story I was telling you about the guy that called me six months later, Don? I was in a movie when he called. In a movie, watch in a movie, by myself. I watch movies by myself. Okay, it's not weird. Go to, it's very normal for you to watch movies by yourself. Okay, I'm an introvert. Just shut up about it. And he literally called me and I was like, oh shit, and like ran out of the theater, right? And he's like, Alec, I'm sitting here with the Johnsons. I don't even remember, like, you know, we're, they need to get a prequel letter. Can you help? I'm like, absolutely. I'm like grabbing napkins, like writing on the popcorn bucket. I'm like, I can do a prequel right now. Like, obviously I cannot. I had to get home. But like that, I mean, so, but this is how bad you want it, man. Like you build intention around your efforts of how many calls you're going to make, how many face-to-faces you're going to do and you let nothing stop you, your business will explode. All right, so we got realtors down. Okay, let's talk past clients. Got to talk past clients, right? Mm -hmm. Section two, as we talked about, you, your strategy is no strategy. No strategy. <laughs> no strategy. <laughs> I mean, these are the people that you did, you changed their life. Yeah. And you never talked to them again? A few of them. Just don't lie. Okay. Yeah, a few, few of them. them. Yeah. Okay. So let's call this MIC. MIC. Monthly Intentional Contact. Okay. You got to build a plan where you talk to these people or get them something every month to make sure they know you're not dead. Because, I mean, you want referrals, right? You, and do they have friends and family that could get loans? Yeah. Of course they do. Of course they do. I mean, the second you do a loan for some of these people, don't they want to give your friends, don't they refer to their friends and family over to get another loan? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So if you're not staying in touch with them, if you're not intentionally staying in touch with them, I know the organic stuff, but the organic stuff doesn't get you, how much business do you really want to do? Have you thought about that? Do you have a number? Infinite. Infinite. See, that's, that's my man. Just, just, just no rules. What did you do last year about? The same volume? Yes. About. 13.6. How many people? People. How many humans did you, did you affect? Do you know? About 100. 100? Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to do 200? I want to do more than that. Oh, absolutely. But we got to start somewhere, right? So if you want to get, let's just, let's just do some funny math. Like let's say you want to get to 200 from 100, right? Double your business, which anybody in their right mind would be like, I doubled my business in a year. You crushed it. You crushed heads. It's, 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 it's so hard to double your business that people incrementally grow, but doubling is almost impossible. You wanna know how you do it? You call every single one of your past clients and you say, I'm not hanging up till you refer me to somebody that I can help. I used to do that when I was in the car dealership. Okay, so maybe, maybe you're <laughs> like, I'm never going back to that person. I hate that person. I'm not the hard closer anymore. Well, I can do it. That's it just depends on what you want. Yeah. But my friend, if, they, if, if you did 100, if you changed the lives of 100 people, they can't tell you to call one person. They don't know one person. Of course they do. MIC, monthly intentional contact, is your strategy to get something, whether it's a call or something physical, in the hands of your customers every month to let them know that you, need the, that you value their referrals and you want it. So this gets into your personality a little bit. But what are some of the things you think you could do every month? What jumps out? What jumps to your mind? Anything you tell me. This is I'm the best open to it. I'm open to it. Yeah, that's true. You just tell me and I will execute. Okay. So 
I would say, let's break it down into quarters. Okay. So that we're not just, so, so like, let's just do one, two, three, and you're going to do that January, February, March, and then you're going to repeat. Okay. Okay? So every three months, you're going to do the same thing. So month one is a call. So how many past clients do you think you have? About? I don't know. Okay, see, this is another thing. You should know. And you, should, you don't even know exactly. I, I never knew exactly. But I knew there was like 250-ish, or I knew there was 400-ish. And so... I think it's about, about 100. Okay, so let's say there's yeah. 100 in your database right now, right? Yeah. So, if you're going to call 100 people in one month, you're probably not going to do that in one day. You probably need to space that out, right? So, it's probably 25 a week, right? So now, maybe you want to do five a day. That, that sounds like editable. Editable? Biteable? Not editable. Edible. Like edible. Yeah, not editable. Doable? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so five a day doesn't seem that insurmountable. You could probably do five a day, right? So now, if I go back and look at your week, right? Monday, you're going to make calls, right? So now we're adding in five calls a day to past clients. And, and literally, you can make this simple. You can just print the list out. Like, don't overcomplicate this. Don't overcomplicate this. Print your list out and just be like, okay, scratch the name off. And you just call five a day. Now, when you call them, what are you going to say? Say hi. Yeah. I mean, you're just going to shoot the breeze. You're going to be like, what's up? And it's not a call call because you don't. No, yeah, so. no, you're just like, it's a check-in call. And maybe, maybe they need a HELOC. Maybe they need cash out. You don't know, but you're not calling for that. You're just calling to say like, hey, what's up? It's Eduardo checking in. You know, I did, you, look, you have their loan up. You know, um, I did your loan six months ago. I'm just seeing how you're doing. Oh, I'm doing great. Awesome. By the way, I don't want you to ever forget because I would, I would kill myself. But like, I do cash out. I do refinance. I do HELOCs. If you ever have any questions on that, make sure you call me. Okay, yeah, I will. Thanks. By the way, can I ask you one more thing before I let you go? Sure. Do you know anybody that's looking to get a loan? So you call up, you shoot the breeze, you remind them that you're here if they need anything, right? You can, you can even let them know, by the way, your rate's here and rates are here now. So you're still looking good, just so you know. I am looking out for you. And then, hey, before I let you go, do you know anybody that, that needs a loan? Or needs to get on the path to get a loan? And what are they going to say most of the time? If I think of anybody, I'll let you know. That's fair. That's what they're going to say most of the time. Because this isn't a high pressure call. You're not like, I'm not hanging up to you, give me a name. But like, I'm telling you right now, if you called your past clients once a month, uh, sorry, once every three months, right, and you just asked them that stuff, what do you think is going to happen? You will get deals from You're going to get deals. Yeah. Make sense? All right, so that's the call. Month two, email. Fair? Now, even though Lone Depot's got the best drip emails in the world. I don't want you to send an email from uh, a drip email from Lone Depot. I want you to write them an email. Okay? How do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. Fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think the email should say? I don't know. Well, let's make up some stuff. Uh, let me give you some options. You could give them a market update. Right? They're going to get an email from you every three months, okay? So you can tell them what's going on in the market if, that's, if you want to. You can steal from Barry Habib. Tell them what's going on with interest rates. Take, copy Barry Habib's comments and be like, by the way, this is a great economist I follow. Here's what he's saying about rates. I thought I'd share it with you, okay? You could do a market update. You could do a, um, uh, a personal note. No, no, I'm sorry, not a personal note. We'll get there in a second. You could do a mortgage update. And what, what's a mortgage update? It's not a, it's not a market update. It's, hey, it's almost the same thing you do on the phone call. Hey, I just thought I'd send you a note. Staying in touch with my past clients is important to me. If you know anybody who needs a loan, you make sure you, give them, you tell them to call me. And by the way, I also do cash outs and HELOCs or any other refinance you might need. So make sure if you need anything, you call me. That's all it is. It's just a couple sentences of an email. You blow it up, check it, you want to check it. My anxiety would be going nuts if I didn't check my phone. So is it a client? It's kind of likely. Because we can, you can, we can, we can pause for clients. We do that here. You need to take it. Oh, it was a scam. Oh, a scam. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. of course it is. <laughs> Plus, by 
Leave it in. Yeah. <laughs> it's a scam every time. So does that make sense? Just it like does. it doesn't. It, yeah. You 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 don't have to send them a huge like like again back to your personality type. Okay. If you're not this data-driven market update, here's the rates and here's the Gaunt chart and the candlesticks green and red and like that doesn't excite you, don't send that crap. I hate when people try to fake it again. This is like wearing the mask. Take the mask off and be like, tell people what's really going on. Tell people what you think is happening. Or just remind people that you're around, around and you're here to help. Make sense? All right. Um, the next thing you can do is tell a story. I love these. So. Let me give you an example. People right now have pretty low interest rates from the last couple of years. Fair? They, they've got low interest rates from 2020. Are they really wanting to refinance? Probably not, because they don't want to lose their really low rate. But guess what else is also true right now? There's more credit card debt than ever before in American history. So people, your clients, have gone out and racked up credit card debt. Maybe not because they're bad people, just because life happened and they had to, and they had to deal with life. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. So now they've got record high credit card debt and a really low mortgage rate. This is a cash out refinance opportunity. And a story that I like is sharing about how somebody refinanced out of a 3% mortgage rate and took a 6.5% mortgage rate and because they paid off all their credit card debt, their total payment went down. People aren't thinking about that. They're like, I can't touch my mortgage. What am I going to do with these, these terrible interest rates on my credit cards? That's true. But you, you explaining how the math works and showing a little of the story can, can spark something in their brain about what they could do. Or even, it could be even simpler. It could be like, I exchanged a 22% giant credit card debt for a 10% HELOC. <laughs> I just saved 10, uh, double reduced my interest rate. Maybe I should go get a HELOC right now from you. So you telling those stories in a quick email, give people context to call you. That makes sense? And the last thing you can do is the personal note. Now, this gets a little weird, but just stay with me. If our objective in relationship building with our customers is trust, then another way to build trust is by leading with vulnerability or by sharing things that are going on with you. Let me, let me give you a personal take and then you can, you can run this any way you want. But when I was writing loans directly, every single time a customer chose to work with me, it changed my life. Because they started, they believed in me, they let me help them, and what happened? I got to build my career. And I, I, this sounds silly, but it's no joke. Every customer helped me pay for my honeymoon. Every customer helped me with my first down payment for my house. Every customer helped me afford the next car that I wanted to buy or the maintenance on the car that was breaking down. So like they literally were changing my life. So yes, I mean, we get to do loans for people and do some incredible stuff, but like the fact that we get rewarded and get to build a career and can do, do things we want was, in, was to me was really special. And so what I did was I wrote personal newsletters once a quarter to my past customers. And I just told them what was going on in my life. Now, some people are like, that's too personal, that's too weird. For me, it was just the natural extension of like, you did business with me. And because of that, like, I get to put food on my family's table. Like it's a, it means something. And so I would share. I would share about like getting married. Like I, I, I shared about going on our honeymoon. I shared about uh, buying our first condo and thanking all my past customers that helped, that they're, they helped me buy my first condo. Like, you know, and there's a place where like this gets be weird. Like if you're a douche and you're sharing about your new Ferrari and you're like, thanks for my Ferrari, you're like, you're an idiot. But like if you're sharing, like I, when I took my puppy home for the first time, like my little bulldog, I, I shared a picture of my bulldog and said like, this is my new dog. So I'm just, I'm, I'm giving you that to do with what you want. But by doing that, guess what you think, what do you think happened? Take it personal. Yeah, I mean my past customers got to know me. 
I wasn't a transaction anymore. I wasn't this like, oh, I used Alec and then I forget he exists anymore. It was, oh, Alec keeps sending me stuff. He reminds me of the services he does. He showed me a picture of his dog recently. And it's like, all of a sudden I became a human being to them. And you know how much harder it is to forget a human being than just the guy that did your mortgage? So I'm not saying this needs to be your strategy, but it could be. Figure out how you want to come across. I wanted my clients to know me. I wanted to have a real human connection with them. And so I wasn't, a, I wasn't afraid to be a little vulnerable. And, and I'm, I am 100% positive that I turned some people off. Absolutely, they were like, this guy's weird. I don't care about your dog. Please stop mailing me stuff. Like I'm, I have no doubt. But those jerks were worth getting rid of. And the customers that really like, got to know me would call me all the time. Does that make sense? So you've got to figure out your monthly intentional contact. I would say the third thing needs to be something physical. So call once a month, email, and then something physical in the mail. That costs money. I get that. Not everyone's rolling in cash. But I'm telling you that if you send somebody a letter, if you send somebody something that, like something funny, a squish toy, a, a dog bone, uh, seeds to plant in their garden, like uh, golf balls, something. I, I don't know why, but humans love getting shit in the mail. What do you get in the mail today? Garbage? Is it garbage? Like just junk, right? In the mm -hmm. mail, all day long is junk. Mm -hmm. But if you got something from somebody that was a real thing, a letter, a, a tchotchke, a stress toy, so something with, uh, with a note that said, you know, I'm not dead, love, love to do your loans, right? I don't care, it can be that simple. It can be that stupid, tongue in cheek, it's fine. They're just gonna remember you. So, to circle up monthly intentional contact on past clients, once a, one month call, one month mass email, something that you write, and one month send them something physical in the mail. Think about that, digest that, we'll come back. Make sense? All right, last. I told you this is gonna be a meaty topic. We're going social media. Okay. Let's hit the foundation first, all right? Two-way street. Two-way street. Everyone blows it, everyone messes this up. You're gonna kill it, okay? The first thing on the first, on the first way of the street, I want you to write down, be interested in other people. Spam. <laughs> no, that's actually a realtor. Take it, take it. Realtor, pause, <laughs> go. All right, we're back into be interested in other people. So there's several strategies people screw up on social. We talked about this a little bit, but let me give you the big ones. The big ones is they don't have, they're not connected to anyone. So for example, who do you think you should be connected with on social media? To my segmentation, I believe. Say again? My segmentation. Uh, the yeah, yeah, but like, so let, let's define it, right? So. How about the realtors in your marketplace? Mm -hmm. That's an easy one, right? Realtors. Mm -hmm. And so back to that top list of 100, I would tell you to take that top list of 100 and go find them on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Now, I call this ICE, identify, connect, and engage. So let's, let's, let's keep going down the identification process. Top 100 agents, got it. What, who else do you think you should be connected with on social media? 
I'll give you a hint. We just talked about them in the last segment. The customers? Yeah, your past customers. Yeah. God, yeah, of course. Right? Because you want them to refer you people and you want them to come back to you for more loans and all those reasons, right? So you should be connected with them on social media. So I literally print out the list of your 100 and go find them on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay? Now, this is, let's just stop there. That's, that, there's 100, 100 agents and 100 of your past clients. It's 200 names. It's a lot. So for you to have those names printed out and then to pull up Instagram and type in the name and look for them and be like, is that them? Yes, that's them. Follow. Is that them? LinkedIn. Is that them? Yes. Connect. That, that's a pain in the ass. But it's the work you have to do on social for it to mean anything. I had, I had somebody else come up to me the other day and they're like, Alec, I've, I've been doing all these videos that you tell me to do. I'm like, that's awesome. It's like, but nobody, I don't get any comments or any views. And I like go look and I'm like, well, are, are you connected to all the agents, all the realtors? No. Are you connected to any of your past clients? No. Well, who the hell is going to see your video? Like no one's going to see it. So you, re- you, you got to get intentional with this. Does that make sense? And people just screw this up immediately. They go right to filming videos. And I'm like, no one's going to see it. So don't make that mistake. Print out the list of your customers. And then, I, I, again, we're going back to your week, right? Mondays. So like, let's just joke about Mondays again. Mondays, you're calling your agents, right? You're calling five past clients. And I would tell you that you should connect to five of these people on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook every day. Five. So if you look at what we're really doing here is we're building structure to your day. All of a sudden now, it's like, well, I wake up and instead of maybe jumping on the internet and checking out my email, I get my cup of coffee and I have my names of my agents and my past customers and I start looking for five first while I drink my coffee. And I connect to them on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. And now that we made all your profiles look badass, when they get the request, they'll look at it and be like, oh, this guy's a player and they'll accept. Make sense? So. This is identify and connect, and then the E is engage. This takes effort. This is where people fail miserably too. They might even put the effort in to film the videos, but they're gonna fail on this part. What did I tell you to write down? Be interested in other people, right? Mm -hmm. What are people doing on social media? I mean, besides just doom scrolling and like, you know, looking at, what, what are they doing? Disconnecting. Disconnecting. And, and when they post stuff, what are they posting? Stuff that they wanted to attract. Yeah, it's, li- it's literally stuff, right, yeah. is the answer. They're just posting random stuff. Mm-hmm. And some are posting their food, and some are posting their kid, and some are posting their accomplishments. Their Realtors life. are posting their listings, right? They're just posting. They're just sharing stuff. Brother, they're giving you a direct line of access and sight into their life for free. They're just giving it to you. They're just sharing it with you. And all you have to do is pay attention and then engage. Let me tell you what I mean. Okay. Let me, let me, let me show you what this looks like. So let's say you're drinking your coffee in the morning, right? Are you a coffee guy? Sometimes. What what do you have a morning ritual? Nothing. Just water, just cold into the day. So it's unbelievable. There's no caffeine. You're just like, I wake up and I go. No, good, no. If, I, if I take caffeine, I, I, I'll be too hyped. So uh, <laughs> I can't. You're not like me at all. So I'm going to still make you drink coffee. You're drinking your coffee and you're, you have your list of realtors, you have your list of past clients, and you're looking them up on Facebook and Instagram. Okay? As okay. soon as you're done connecting with five, you scratch the names off, and then you're going to spend the next 10 minutes scrolling. Okay? Stay with me. As you're scrolling, you're looking. You're not doom scrolling. You're not zoned out. You're looking. You're looking for the posts of your past clients and the agents you're trying to build business with. And when you see their post, what are you going to do? You tell me. You're going to comment. Okay. You're not going to like it. Yeah, I mean, likes are a dime a dozen. Likes are lazy. What takes effort is actually commenting. Okay, let me give you an example, a real life one. Let's say that you and I are, are cruising 
uh, I'm on one side of the street and you're on the other side of the street. And I, I see you across the street, right? And I, I give you a, uh, Eduardo, and you look over and I give you a little head bump and I, one of these, and you give me one of these, and we keep going, okay? That's a like. Now, imagine the world where I see you across the street, and I'm like, Eduardo! And I run across the street like a psychopath, like through the cars, and I'm like in, and I just wrap you up in a hug, and I'm like, dude, it is so good to see you! Man, how you been? Like, do you see the difference? Like, one is this kind of like, I acknowledge you, and one is this intentional effort to just tell you you're awesome. How do you think you feel on both those interactions? Different, right? Yeah. So, a comment is you running across the street and giving somebody a hug. That's the power of this stupid platform that we take advantage of that's absolutely free that we never leverage. You sitting there with your coffee, espresso, you're an espresso man now, the homemade espresso, and seeing a realtor's post, seeing a past client share about their cookout or whatever it is, and being like, oh man, I'm jealous, I wish I could be there, or that looks awesome, or oh, congrats on the new listing, great job, you know, looks a beautiful house. Like an actual sentence from your brain into the internet. I just cannot tell you what, what value this brings. It just costs you some time. But if the game is deep relationships where people trust you and know you, what do you think happens when they're seeing you commenting on their stuff on a regular basis? Not like a creep the second their post goes up, you're commenting, but like, you know, you're in there and you're being intentional. What do you think they feel towards you? It gets more closer. Of course. Yeah. 100%. Can you see it? And so, I haven't even, we haven't even filmed you yet. But like this makes so much impact. So much impact. And yet, why do you think people don't do it? Laziness. Absolutely. Or also, not to, not to be harsh, but like people, uh, all of us tend to be a little self-obsessed. A little self-absorbed. And that's normal. Like, we're thinking about our own problems. We're thinking about what we have to do today and the issues and the kid pickup or the groceries we need or the bills we have. Like, that's, it's very normal. So to get outside of yourself and be like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go tell this person, my past client, I'm going to look for them. And when I see them, I'm going to tell them they're awesome. That takes effort and intention. And that's why people don't do it. We're, we're stuck here. But holy crap. You want to talk about how to make someone feel good? You want to talk about how to win? Go love on people. So in this ICE strategy, we've identified realtors and past clients. There's a thousand more. There's all the people in your community. There's, you know, there's a thousand more types of people you could identify. But even if we just did realtors and past clients, kept it real simple, and you had two lists of 100 names each, and every day you went out and found five of them and you requested a connection, right? And then every day for 10 minutes you scrolled and you looked down and you just said, oh yeah, killer. Oh, that house looks amazing. Timmy's soccer goal was amazing. Whatever you're commenting, if you just do that, you're gonna grow your business by a, a quarter. It's, it's, it's no brainer. So again, looking back at your day, you see how much there's, you see how now there's more opportunity for structure? Now, you got your calls you're gonna make, you got the people you're gonna add on social, you got the comments you're gonna leave, and it's 9.30. And already, how much energy you've put into marketing yourself is far surpassing everybody else who's doing the organic, here's my list, I'll, maybe I'll get to a call, I'm sh stuck in email for two days. Like this effort, and then it's Wednesday, so after lunch you're gonna go out, you're gonna go face to face, you're gonna see some agents, maybe you take a picture at one of the open houses and you post it and tag the agent, we'll talk, like, do you see this, do you see this? It just compounds. And all of a sudden now you're just a machine. And, and it takes hard work, like this is, this is annoying. I'm telling you right now, you print out those lists of 100 and you look at it every day, you're like, I hate you, Alec. I hate that I have to look these stupid people up. I hate that I have to type the names in like an like a idiot. Like, I understand. But like, this is how you win, dude. You don't win by making the game-winning bucket at the end of the game. You win by setting picks and running plays and doing all the hard work and sitting there dribbling for 17 days to get better at it. And that's how you win. This is the stuff that no one wants to talk about. Does that make sense? All right. 
So now that's the one way street of being interested in other people. Now I want you to write down, be helpful. So your social strategy is two things. One is be interested in other people. Got that, right? Know what mm -hmm. to do. The second strategy is be helpful. I told you this is a meaty segment, but this is going to help. Are, are you learning? Is this, this, okay, tracking. So another mistake people make on social media is they start making videos or content that's all about themselves. Have you seen any like that? A lot. <laughs> it's gross, isn't it? It's gross. And, and, and like my favorite is people that start their video with, hey everybody, like they're somehow like everyone, no one, like anyone gives a shit at all. Like, hey everybody, who's everybody, dude? There's like one person watching your video. <laughs> like stop with the everybody. Like, but, but it's a natural, we, we think we're on, on, on the show. We think we're on display. And we think we're talking to a thousand people. Your job is to be helpful to one person, dude. That's your job. Be helpful for one person. And so when we talk about content strategy, which we're gonna go do, we're gonna do a whole thing and then we're gonna film. I want you to think about before you even open your mouth, before you even put a video out or an article out or share a comment or share a thought, you need to come back to this one route. Be helpful. Now, we'll get into content. We'll, we'll talk through strategy. Stay tuned. But how often do you think you need to put out stuff on social media? What does your gut tell you? Every day. See, my man, dude. You're a man of few words. When you, when you speak, it's powerful. Why do you say that, though? Because you got to get you gotta keep, like, people engaged with you. Yeah. So let, let's think of it this way, and, and if this helps you, great. The, you have to understand the culture of the platforms and the habits and behaviors of people on the platforms. So when people are on Instagram, for example, what do you think they're doing? What's their behavior? They're scrolling. They're scrolling, yeah. right? So they're scrolling. And so are they watching everything? Absolutely not. No. So they're because that's not what you do. You just kind of look at stuff and if you, I mean, you watch some things, right? If you see something catch your eye, you, you pay attention. But most of the time people are just scrolling. So that means if you put out a video every single day, which would be gnarly, wouldn't it? Do you think they're watching your videos? Probably not. Probably not. So what do you think the value is of doing that? Why do that then? To reach more people. Possibly. Any other thoughts? If you put content every, every day a different content, probably uh, somebody watch a post of you. Yeah. But they keep rolling onto your um, uh, website or whatever. Sure. They might click and through. And they find something they, they do know they want now, but you told them, three, four, five months ago, yep. maybe that's um, something they need. I don't know. <laughs> so all, all that's true. And, and here's, here's another piece that just I want you to, to sink in on so you can get the power of this. Um, name an insurance company. Geico. Geico. Why did you, why, do you use Geico? Yeah. You use Geico. Yeah. Why else did you come up with Geico? So how do you think Geico got in your brain? Had to get there, right? Before you decided to use them, Mm -hmm. Something made you use Geico. Any idea? Yeah. I, I have a thought. <laughs> I think it's repetition. See, I think Geico is spending billions of dollars to put their brand and their humor in front of consumers. So that when you have to go get insurance, that one time we go do it, and then we never think about it again, fair, fair that their name comes up and we go get it. Right. Why? Do you remember their tagline? No, you don't remember their tagline. So they, you know, what, say 15% or more on car, car insurance, insurance and whatever it is, right? Yeah. So when we're talking every day on social, we're talking frequency, we're talking consistency <coughs> because we're, we're creating brand impressions, you're creating awareness. And so just imagine every day you're putting out a helpful, positive message and people are strolling by your beautiful face every day. So what do you think they're thinking? It's the same thing that realtor thought that I came in, I showed up at his open house every day. 
this guy's consistent. This guy, this guy works hard. This guy's knowledgeable. He's passionate. He cares. He's thoughtful. They're building an impression of you every day. And so, the power of that is unbelievable. So yes, maybe some people watch all your videos, which is true, some people will. And because and, we'll talk, we'll make sure you're doing great videos. And they'll, they'll watch it, and they'll learn something. And maybe they'll call you for a loan. But what's happening every day, if you can picture this, is if all your past clients and realtors and your community are connected to you on social media, and they're seeing you every single day, the power of that from a marketing perspective is, is unbelievable. They're going, your business is going to grow. They're going to call you for loans. The realtors that were C's and B's that maybe were not using you are going to become A's because they're going to see you every day. And in that time period, they're going to get to know you, they're going to choose to trust you, and they're going to send you deals. And it's going to be one of those things where you're not really going to know what did it. Was it the phone call? Was it the Sunday open house? Is it the social media every day? You're not going to really know what, what changed it. But those realtors will then become your partners. Those customers will then send you referrals and your business will just continue to do this. But you do have to figure out how to show up every day. So we will help you with that. We will build a strategy for you. We will show you ideas. We will get you prepped up. We'll film videos and we'll edit you. But you're gonna have to figure out how to do it every day. So let's go back and like look at your week for a second, right? So now we've got the framework for a pretty powerful week. You know, so every day, Monday through Friday, you have X calls you're gonna make, right? And it's strategic, it's on your board. You gotta check the box, you gotta make sure you hit all the people. You've got um, past clients to call every day if that's the month, or you got an email to write, or something physical to mail, right? So you have your MIC every week. You have your ICE strategy. So every day, you're finding five people to connect with on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And every day you're scrolling and you're making comments to five to 10 people. And then you've got your content strategy. How do I get a piece of video out every single day? Which we're gonna, do, we're gonna work on. It's not, it's not overwhelming. You don't have to walk around with a camera all day like this, you know, thinking you're big time. There's a way to do it. But imagine your week, Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday that was built for this, with your face-to-face. -face. Maybe you're getting out of the office a couple days a week and going and seeing open houses and previews. Now, this is a marketing week. This is a week that takes you from organic and 100 clients a year to strategic and 200 clients a year. And again, it's about how big you want to make it. Like, what, which of these do you want to adopt? Which of these are you going to put accountability around yourself so that you don't get lazy? How are you going to make sure that what you want in life is, is as important, is, is important enough to get you off your ass to do the work that you really know you want to be doing? That's the next level stuff. But does this make sense? Do you get how this structures a week? So after this, I will, we'll recap this and we'll send you an example week. We'll give it to you. Be like, here's what we talked about. And you can decide, is this too much? Is this not enough? How would I do this? Do I want to do this? And you can wrestle with it. Because you need to make it your own. You know, I'm happy to give you a playbook, but you're going to have to live with it. So you got to find out what works for you. <coughs> I'll tell you, I've had some people look at me and go, Alec, I can't do a video every day. Can't do it. And I, and I go, can you do one a week? I'm like, I can do that. I can do one a week. I'm like, great. So now, at least we got one going. And as you get stronger, maybe we'll get two. But when we get to the end game, your, your business will radically transform. And this is the part two, Eduardo, we're gonna have to scale your team. We're gonna have to talk about support and structure and all that stuff that you're probably talking to Mari about today. Because you can't do, can you do all this your loan? No. Not if you're gonna keep getting the, imagine getting to 200 clients. Can you imagine how much more work oh, you have no. to do? Talking on the phone, just, just in solving deals. But that's also the good stuff, because that's where opportunity is, man. Mm -hmm. That's the next level. And you're capable of it. You can do it. At least I'm going to try to do my best, so. Yeah, well look, baby steps, man. Yeah. Like, I, when we deliver this plan for you and, and give it to you, maybe you just work on implementing one part of it for a week or two. Like, just one part. You don't have to do all, take all of it right, right away. You just, you just do one thing right now. And then you, get, you feel like you get in a groove with it, you get, you get comfortable with it, you, you now it's a habit, and you do the next thing. I'll tell you, twice in my life I've done 
Uh, we'll wrap this segment up, but I'll, I'll tell you something. So twice in my life, I've done a personal challenge where I stuck to something for 100 days. And I was like, I'm going to do this for 100 days no matter what. The first time was I'm going to do a video every single day for 100 days, which was stupid. But I, I needed to figure out how to get good at that stuff. I needed to figure out how to incorporate it into my life because we're all busy, right? You're, you're doing stuff. How do I, where do I find time? I had to figure out how to do that. Um, the second time was when I did 100 days um, uh, of a weight loss challenge where I only ate meat and vegetables and I cut out sugar, carbs, alcohol, everything. And I just ate meat and vegetables and I worked out every day for 100 days and I lost 55 pounds. Cool. But both of these 100 days that I committed to transformed my life and my career. And so maybe for you, it starts with 30 days, it starts with one month. And you get some support with some people around you to do some things differently than you've done before. But as you baby step into this stuff, what will happen is you get the positive momentum. You start to get more leads. You start to, see the, you start to see the business change. You start to experience it. And then you get that encouragement to keep going. Make sense? All right. Are you ready to go start filming some content? Yeah. We're going to mess around first before because most people have this excuse of, I don't know what to say. So we're gonna solve that first. Okay. You ready to go? All right, are we gonna do magic fist bump? Uh, magic, magic change? Uh, bah! All right, welcome. We have a crowd here. They can't, the cameras don't show the crowd. We got, we got a crowd here, we got some help. We got some audience participation, which is good because we're going to solve the problem or the excuse that is rampant in content creation, which is, I don't know what to say. I hate that, it's a lie. So we're gonna break it down. We're gonna, have, we're gonna do a little like a whiteboarding session on this massive whiteboard. It's so big. I feel like I'm in the office skit with the plasma screen. <laughs> um, okay, are you ready? I am. All right, so before we write anything down, the first thing that anyone has to do to go through this practice of what to say we're going to be building a content calendar. We're, going to be building, we're developing a content strategy. And so simplistically put, you're going, we're going to come up with topics that we're going to make videos about. Make sense? Kind of? Yep. You're with me. All right. So first, where do we start? What do you care about? We talked about this in the very beginning with your story. Like if you had to picture the clients you care about, what are they like? Our clients. What are they dealing with? What are their problems? Income. Okay. Uh, credit. Yeah. Assets. Okay. So we're starting high level. Are they first-time home buyers or are they second home buyers? Mostly first-time okay. home buyers. Okay. So write down uh, F T H B. I'm super bad with this. This is great. Yeah. No, we like it. Uh, B. B. Home buyer. Okay. Now I'll take the pen. We'll, 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 hand, off, we'll hand off here. So if you had to list 10 things that a first time home buyer needs to understand. Right? 10 things. Micro topics. Just one thing. Credit. Credit. Yeah. Now, give me another one. Income. Yep. Assets. Yep. Employment history. I'm gonna write down job. Yep. Um, Co-signers, in case they need it. Co-signers, yeah, absolutely. What else? Mm. Peanut gallery, what's he missing? What do you mean? Budget? Budget? Yeah. Budget? yeah. What else? What other concerns do first-time home buyers have? Uh, affordability. Yeah, so let's write down like, DTI and affordability, right? Location. Okay, I'll go. I'll give. I'll give that one to you. What else? Uh, first thing, home buyers need to know. Condo. Property types. Yeah. Available programs. Oh, see, there you go. Programs is a good one. DPA. DPA is a good one. How about fees or costs? Right? There's going to be costs and fees. What else? Rate. 
Rates, absolutely. Like what are rates and how do you determine a rate and what's my rate and what's an APR? No one knows that, it's a mortgage thing. No one knows what APRs are. So um, who, who said down payment? The non-mortgage guy. Yeah, I'll put uh, <laughs> zero. Down payment. Now I can go on and on. Uh, appraisals, inspections, Realtors. how to pick a realtor, right? We do have a solution for realtors. So right now, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 ideas in what? A minute and a half? Two, like a minute and a half. Now, VA, right? Second home, investment properties. Reno, on and on. And what we're unpacking here or discovering is for each of these topics, there's a related topic that is applicable to each category. So for example, a video you might make, make on down payment for a first time home buyer might be very different than a video you make for a veteran regarding down payment, right? VA loans have different nuances. And so even talking about down payment, you just might make it slightly different when you talked about a VA. And if you were gonna make a video for someone wanting to buy a second home, you could talk about down payment again, but again, it would have nuance to it because now it's a second home and second homes have different guidelines. Same with investment, same with renovation. You could do reverse if you wanted to play with reverse. And you pick the categories that you're interested in and you can really break this apart. And so literally, we could take these 15 videos and now multiply it by one, two, three, four, five, six different categories, and now I have 80 videos to make. And we didn't even exhaust first-time home buyer. Like, we didn't. We, we didn't, we didn't, appraisal's not on here, inspection's not on here. We didn't even exhaust the topics here. So now let's get into the stuff that you really care about, right? Because you said in the very beginning that you work on hard loans, right? And you have a passion for hard loans. In fact, I think there's a reason hard loans find him. It's a whole part of his story and who you are and who you serve and where your heart is. I think that you are drawn to those because you're a solution problem solver. But which, where, where, what are the hard loan issues? What are people really struggling with? You know what they are. Countless. What? Huh? Countless. But too many. Debt, you said? Too many issues. Issues yeah. to, to list. I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I know his loan, so I'll tell you. Uh, yeah. Taxes. Yeah. Big problem. What, what's the problem? Self-employed. Self-employed. Yeah. The gig economy here. Yeah. So, when we get into, uh, does this exercise make sense? Yeah. Because what what I want you to do with this is not be done here. I want you to take this, put it into a Google Drive doc or a Word doc or some kind of place electronically and just start building out all these topics. Just list them, list them, list them, list them. And then start building out a whole section on problems and list the problems. List the problems that you're solving every day. List the problems that you're dealing with all the day. List the self-employed issues, list them all out. And what you'll come to realize really fast is that we don't have a content problem. There's so many things to talk about. And let me just give you another piece of advice on this. Let's say one of your problems is the gig economy and self-employed customers, right? It's one of your problems? Is it the biggest problem? What's the biggest problem? Uh, yeah, probably that. I would say that. Okay. Yeah. So you make one video on this. Done. Make a killer video. You post it. Did everybody see it? We just talked about this in there. What are they doing on social media? Scrolling. 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 So did they see it? Most likely not. Probably not. Yeah. So guess what you get to do? You get to talk about it again. And then you get to talk about it again. And then you get to talk about it again. The same video? No, the same problem. So the question was the same video. No, it's the same problem. Because you get to address, if, if this is a real issue, so let, like, like, let's give an example. Like, um, if not having enough money for a down payment is, the, is an issue, 
and you're really passionate about getting people into homes and using DPAs and using Access Zero, and you're really, like that, that's what gets you up in the morning, then you got to play that horn all day long, every day, all the time to get somebody's attention on social media. And if you're passionate about it and you really care about solving that problem, it's not a burden to the people around you that are, that are scrolling by it. They, just, they know you're on a mission to, to solve a problem. And so you get to keep repeating yourself and bringing up that idea again and bringing up solutions again and bringing up ways to solve that problem again over and over and over again. People think that repetition is like it drones out or it, it, you become white noise. It's not true on social media. That's not, the, that's not the environment on social media. The social media environment is a scroll environment. So you showing up over and over again. And by the way, trust me, is there enough topics to say differentiated? Is there enough topics? Sure. You, you have topics for days, forever, infinite topics. And by the way, the topics keep coming. What's a current market issue we're facing right now? Affordability. Sure, affordability, because what's happened? I wrote that down over here. What's happened? What's going on? Prices and rates. Prices and rates. Rates went up, prices are up, no inventory. That's a current market issue. Now we might have inventory issues for a long time, but like you can talk about that right now. Well, guess what's gonna happen? What happens if rates go back down to four? Prices will go up. Prices are going to go up even more, right? Mm -hmm. So now this, this gets solved a little bit in the sense of like loans are more affordable. But guess what? You have a new problem, which means what? You have new topics to talk about. <laughs> so I, I think of it like this. I, I don't know what works for you. I use my phone, but sometimes I, I encourage people to have like a little black book for content. Because you were just on the phone with a customer, weren't you, and a realtor. What was the problem? What happened? Closing. The closing. Yeah. They were going to buy a house. The seller, the seller was buying another house. Was buying another house, and the seller didn't get their loan approved. Didn't get their loan approved. It was closing today. So now everyone's so so you guys heard that right? Like so, the seller didn't get the loan, so they're not moving. They're that, not is that moving the, that's yeah. the problem. That problem. You think you're the first person to ever deal with that problem? No. Nope. No, absolutely not. That's happened to tons of Americans. So, what's the solution? That. You're solving it right now. You're, you're talking, you're, maybe you're trying to get that loan and you're trying to approve it. Like you're, you know, we're, we're, you're so, but this is, now you can make a piece of content and go, don't let this happen to you. Always have a backup lender. This is why working with someone who, who you trust and who you know matters because a real estate transaction isn't the one you think it is. It's the one that's in front of it that's affecting this one. And so now you can give solutions to that problem now because it's happening to you in real time. This is the power of taking your little black book or your little phone or whatever it is and when you're solving problems for people in real time, note it down, put it to your list and then add it to your content strategy. Every time you guys get on the phone with somebody, you're solving a problem, that's a content, that's a piece of content. Because if you're, we just did this. You were just talking about debt consolidation and cash out and a blended rate, right? We just talked about this in there. How many clients do you think are having, have a record low mortgage and record high debt right now? So you're solving that problem for one customer. You're walking them through it. You're educating them on a blended rate. You're closing the deal. Guess what? Immediately film a video and go, guys, if this is happening to this person, it's probably happened to these people. Let me tell you what to do. <laughs> Here's how blended weight works. It's, it's content. It's immediate, it's immediate video solution. So again, when I, when, I, when I hear the excuse, I don't know what to say, all that really means is I haven't really put the work in because once you do, you realize this list gets gigantic and what you guys should do as a collaborative and for anyone who's watching this, if you're in a collaborative situation with like every meeting, you should have a whiteboard up and, and every, or every day, as soon as you solve a problem, you go put it on the whiteboard for everyone else to see because that's content for everybody that they can make. And every single one of you could do a, could do a debt consolidation blended rate video right now and reach different people. You can even write the same script for each other and just do the same thing. And then as you distribute it, as you put it on your social, it's hitting a whole different group of people. So does this exercise make sense? So all I want you to do as a takeaway is snap a picture or whatever you need to do, open up a, a drive. You can even open up a shared Google Drive with all the loan officers in the branch and everyone can be adding their ideas. I have a link I can send you guys called Alex Content Library. I did this with 30 or 40 people live. Everyone was in a Google Drive doc together and we got 400 topics in 30 minutes. 
400. And then guess what we did? We took the 400, I plugged them into chat GPT, and I said, write me a prompt for each one of these. Write me a script for each one of these. And then immediately we had 400 videos in seconds. Now I'm not telling you to go use ChatGPT to write your prompts. Uh, you know, I want you to share from the heart, but it, does this make sense? Easy? All right, let's get a picture of this. Someone grab their phone because I'm going to erase it. Right in the frame, just right in the frame. Just look at that, so solid. Such a strong move. All right, now. We know what to say. So much to say. How do we say it? This is where people get, this is where also people get stuck. So let's pick a macro problem. What's a, what's a uh, down payment? Easy one. So the problem is what? People don't have it? No down payment? Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're going to write, video content or make video content, which we're going to do in a minute, you have to understand the environment so that you can make content that people can consume easily enough. So for example, if I wanted to talk about down payment and I get the camera, hey everybody, it's your bestie Alec Hansen. I am the chief marketing officer. No one cares. They're gone. They're so gone. They, they have stopped listening. You don't, you don't need to do any of that stuff. Your name is right above you on social. You don't need to introduce yourself. You don't need to address a crowd, because what did I say before? What's the goal? To Remember on, your, on the notes, the first one was be interested in other people. The second one was what? Engage. No. Be helpful. Be helpful, which is your MO, man. You're Mr. Helpful. That's what you live to do. So if I'm going to make a video about this and the problem, how do I be helpful? What's your thoughts? Solving the issues, they solve out. the problem. Yeah. Yep, solve it. And how do I do that on social media in the, the most effective way? Presenting the problem. So let's. Uh, have you? Has anyone seen this before? Hook. People talk about a hook. Yes. So what does hook mean to you? You ever heard that before? Hook. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like a <laughs> fish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people try to talk about hook being this like, you need to do something within the first couple seconds of a video That's to grab people. someone's attention, right? Well, there's, some, there's a bad way to hook. Have you seen any bad hooks? All the time. All the time. And what do they do? What are the bad hooks like? What do you remember? Uh, they sound like they're sending back to you. Yeah, they're like this extreme doom and gloom. Do death and disaster. Oh my God. You're like, you're an idiot if you do this. And you're like, am I an idiot? Like, what did I do? And so they're, they're, they're clickbaity too. They're, they have this kind of vibe to them where they're just like, they're, they're creating false urgency, right? And they're, yeah, and, and so I hate that. It feels inauthentic. And I think it, it's not, I think consumers are too smart for this now. Like they're getting smarter and smarter. You can't just hook someone into your video, but you do need to deliver a solution within the first three seconds. So no one's going to watch your video if you frame it up with, there's a huge issue in mortgage lending today, which is the myth of the down payment. And you, and you start droning on, like they're already gone. You have to so show them the solution to the question and to the issue within the first three seconds. So if the problem is I don't have enough money for a down payment, what's the solution? Down payment assistance. Sure. What's another solution? Solid credit. What, what, is a, what does DPA do? Helps the borrower with no uh, cash to buy their, their home. So it gives them the down payment. Yep. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. So it gives them the money, right? So if you were going to start a video today to talk about that there's a myth and a problem with down payment that you don't really need 20% down, how would you start it out with this? I have no idea. <laughs> so, Show me the money. did or do you know? Do you know? 
It's always a good start. Do you know there are companies that want to give you money for your down payment? I did not know that. There are companies that want to give me money for my down payment? I want to now listen to more of this. You don't even have to say, do you know? You could just say, there are companies that want to give you money for your down payment. So immediate solution, immediate solution. I wasted no time. I did not introduce myself. I did not give you any value. See, here's, here's, so stay with me on this. In, in normal selling, in selling, what companies and individuals do is they first try to show you their value before they sell you anything. They, say, they try to say things like, we've been in business for 100 years. You know, we have a track record of excellence. We win all of our court cases. We close a thousand loans a day. And we try to show someone like, we have value, we're good, check us out. When in reality, the customer does not care on social about any of that validation. They'll go find that out if they want. They want to know the answer to their problem right now. They don't want to know your name. They don't care about how good you are, how much you care. In social, it's th that's the environment. So you got to give it to them. So this is an easy one for down payment. There are companies that want to give you the money for a down payment. Or you could just come out and say, you can buy a house with zero down. I can? Is that bad? That kind of makes me, for, for me, in my paradigm, I start, think, I start thinking of 2008. I'm like, well, does that mean, is that, a, is that a bad loan? Am I gonna, you know, is that, what does that mean? You know, so there's lots of things you can start with, but you have to fall back on this. So let's, let's, let's use another example. If we're, gonna, if we're gonna go for the solve, okay, what's another problem? Credit. 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 Huge problem. Come on. Everyone you talk to have perfect credit? Everyone you work with has perfect credit? No. Nope. No. No. But are there solutions? Of course. So if somebody has banged up credit and that's their problem and you want to be helpful, what's your solution? What's the answer? What information can you provide that can help them? How to, um, well, how to buy the house? Yeah. So if I have banged up credit and I'm scrolling through social media and you're going to tell me something in three seconds. Do you know that you don't need to have 700 credit score to buy a house? See, I like that. So do you know you don't need a 700 credit score to buy a house? But, like, be, but to me, uh, 700 is so far away from what I got that... Not even 650. Okay, closer. I'm feeling better. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's even more extreme? 580. 580 is more extreme. And so again, I'm not trying to, remember I mentioned that hooks can be bad and they're super extreme. We're, we're not trying to do that, but we're not gonna lie. Can you get someone alone with a 580 FICO score? Mm -hmm. Highly likely. Like maybe you have to help them. So, so again, there's nuance to this, right? Like we can do a loan to 520. Does that mean you have a 520, you immediately get a loan? No, of course not. There's, there's nuance. But like, can you do one? Yes. Can you do a 580? Yes. In the right, so, so you might even, so in, in this situation, instead of starting with the, you, can, you don't need a 700, it feels too far away, you could say something like, I've helped hundreds of customers with banged up credit get a loan. Oh, wow, banged up credit, that's me, I have banged up credit. Or don't let banged up credit stop you from getting a loan. Or did you know you can get a loan with a 580 credit score? Those are three examples of ways that you're, le you're leading with the solution, you're sharing information, and now you can go into the rest of your video, which we're going to talk about in a second. But I want you guys to get the vibe of how do you identify the issue and how you start these videos. Because the start is so important. Whatever you say after that, you can drone on a little bit. You can have some more flexibility. But how you start is really important. That's why we're drilling it. That makes sense? Let's try another one. What's another topic besides credit? Sure. And there's layered issues with income, isn't there? There's probably seven or eight or nine videos you can make just on income. Because we could talk self-employed income, we could go tons of different directions. What is one of the main income issues that are causing people not to be able to get a mortgage? Well, you know this one. You got problems all the time. You do the okay. Not enough income. Not enough. So not enough. And when someone comes to you and they don't have enough income, 
how do you solve their problem? First, we have to check it's not only income because <clears throat> it depends of uh, what type of program can we provide them. Okay. So uh, income is different depending on the program that we can um, give them. For example, FHA, we calculate bonus differently than doing conventional. Smart. Okay. So, so one solution uh, we will have to ask more questions. I, I got you. But one solution is program variation. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. What's another solution? Cosigners. Absolutely. What's another solution? More down payment. Okay. What's another solution? Or just differential income. Find another solution. Like Different. NCC. Say again? Like NCC. Okay. What's another one? Combining forces with someone and having a co borrower to live with you. Okay. Co signer, co borrower, right? Different, but similar. Non taxable income. A lot of lenders miss. Gross surplus. Yeah. And then the last one would be you can prep them, right? You can help them. Let's like say they're self employed and they're not declaring any of their income. You can, you can set them up. Yeah. So, it, yeah, you can give them direction of how it works so they can start preparing for it. So, <coughs> lots of solutions, lots of problems. Each of these could be a video. So what, would you, what, what hook or what intro would you use for program variation? Don't think you have enough income, let me show you how. Yeah, even more extreme, but still trying to stay away from the ultimate extreme. If you were declined for not enough income from a mortgage lender, I may have a solution for you. So it, it's still, it's pretty extreme. Like if you were declined, like, oh, yeah. Or if you don't think you can get a loan because you think your income's too low, I probably have a solution for you. Or even self-employed. Yeah, if you're self-employed self and don't think you can get a loan. I can turn your deposits into qualifying income. Here's how, something like that. Exactly like that. Thanks, exactly like that. And this is also the power of collaboration. So, you know, the fact that you guys can all lean in on this and start sharing little pieces of it is you can, remember, you can all make the same video with the same intro. And then the, 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 the landing strip, what you do at the end, can all be unique. But that same piece of intro, um, let, let's think of another one. Um, what, what, uh, cosigner, you said cosigner. Mm -hmm. What would you say for cosigner? What do you mean? What would be your intro for a video? If you don't have enough income and you have a family member that can help you to um, co-sign to buy a house, I have the solution for you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a little long, a little wordy, but like, look, this is your first time doing this, so that's super okay. You could also say, you know, co-signers can save your deal if you don't have enough income. Let me show you how. So, you know, trying to bring it down a little bit where it's more concise, is kind of the, the art of this. And like, look, look don't, don't ever think you're gonna just come out the gate and just crush intros. Like, of course not. Like this is the first time you've ever done this exercise and I have cameras on your face. So of course it's like a little bit awkward, but like, do you get the, the strat, do you get the style? Once you have the style, you can keep refining this. You can go use ChatGPT to help you like come up with like intros. You know, you can identify the problems and the solutions and then deliver that in the first 30 seconds or three seconds. Want to do one more? What do you feel? Yeah, yeah. One more? Okay. What, what, what's another problem? So what's the problem that uh, people have? Assets. Oh, no. Well, we're talking about, yeah, no. Um, that was already down payment. Yeah, down payment. Condos. I love that. Condos. And what's the problems? Budget. The, the HOA? They call the budget, yes. Reserves. Reserves. Yeah. Or FHA. So the condo doesn't have enough reserves? Not, or the, the customer or the condo? The condo. The project. The project, project yeah. Calculated in condo approval because you're building. You're building. Absolutely. I know, so, so I know where you're going. Uh, and condo approval. So let me give you an example of a problem. Have you ever had a customer fall in love with a condo and we can't lend, you can't lend on it? happens all the freaking time. 
I was just talking to Barrett Keshi, and he's all the time, New Jersey, all the time. Like, oh, don't fall in love with condos. You can't, you got to make sure you can do it. So what is, if that's the problem, what is the warning that you need to give somebody? So, because the, the solve here, it, the, maybe there isn't a solve. Maybe the condo is not a, there is no solve. So in these situations, what you're doing is you're, you're transitioning to the solve to a warning, which is very important. It's education effectively. So you're providing education and that's still a solution to a problem. So what would it be here? Before you go under contract to purchase a condo, please make sure your lender and realtor know the following. Yeah, so uh, totally directionally right, just a little wordy. So you know, the, the way to shrink that down would be like, be careful. Don't fall in love with the condo of your dreams without first understanding this. Right. So it, it's, it's almost like, um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a warning to make sure people know to not fall in love. Because as soon as they do and they can't buy it, it's a problem. Make sense? All right, so now let's just wrap, wrap this segment up with how you land the ship. So if we have our list of topics, right? All those topics. And then you come up with your kind of opening intros for them. And again, they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be solution centric and, and oriented. Now we have to land the ship. Because you started a video, you hit me with a good intro. Where do you go? <laughs> so let's just walk through it. So the format again, is solution or warning, right? That's the first segment. What's the second segment? Anyone have a guess? Problem identification. You think that. So let's use down payment again. So if my intro to down payment was, you can buy a house with zero down, okay? Now I need to go on, and so now you're listening, right? Now you're listening, you can buy a house with zero down. Now I get the chance to explain why I said that, which would be, you can buy a house with zero down. There's a huge myth in the mortgage market today that has been around for decades that you need 20% down. So you see where I'm going with this all of a sudden? I, I've slowed down now. I hit you with this. You don't need this. And now I'm, now I'm taking a, a breath and I'm explaining. The reason I said this was because this. How about my condo warning? Don't fall in love with a condo before checking with me because you might not be able to get financing on it. Now I take a breath and I go, condos require condo approval. It's a mortgage terminology. You don't have to know too much. I know about it, but here's how it works. Blank, 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 blank. Some condos don't have that. And if you try to get financing there, it's not gonna work. So the best thing you can do is call me and let me help you find the right thing for you. So then you've got the, the close, which I just jumped into. So again, the format is solution slash warning. You can buy a house with zero down, problem identification. There's a myth that you need 20% down to buy a house, it's not true. I don't know why it keeps going around, but it's not true. You got 1% down, 3.5% down, zero down options, down payment assistant options, close. The best thing to do is to call me and let me help you with your own personal situation. I'm here for anything you, get, anything you need. Condo. Don't fall in love with a condo. You might not be able to buy it. There's a thing called condo approvals. It's a mortgage term. You really need to kind of know what that, what that is. You need certain reserves. It has certain issues, and if you fall in love and can't get a loan, it's not going to work for you. Close. The best thing to do is to call me and let me help explain what to do. Does that make sense? So when you kind of have this one, two, three process, and you identify the problem and solution, you, you have your intro, then you can talk about it for a minute, and then you can kind of just let, let the video go, you'll find that you can effectively have the, use this format for endless content 
and it's going to really prepare you to, to deliver. Now, the reason this works for me, and I, and I think it'll work for you, is because the only thing you need to script is the intro. And that's that, the only thing you need to script is the intro. After that, you can just share from personal experience how this goes, because after that, they're listening. And by the way, this is where people freak out and they think this whole thing needs to be scripted. It can be. You can script the whole freaking thing. But the reality is, is that people like to connect with real people. And real people talk with ums and ands and qualifiers like right. And they, this is how normal humans talk. So they're used to that. How long do you think that the video has to be? That's a great question. Length. So <coughs> here is a problem with videos and a solution. You can over talk a video. You can talk for too long. People tune out. Because the intent of this video is to debunk a myth or provide a solution, but it's not to give them all of the sausage making process in the whole thing. So like, for example, down payment. I could say you don't need zero down to buy a house. Oh God, I'm listening, great. And then I can go, with conventional loans, you need 5%, but you could do three and a half or 1%. Uh, with FHA, uh, we can do, and I'm, I'm, you're gone. It's just too much. Like, don't overwhelm me. Just tell me what I need to know and then get out. So this is short form content. The length needs to be what the length is, meaning whatever it takes to really explain this to some degree without giving somebody the full guideline reveal is how long it needs to be. So a minute, 30 seconds. I, I don't want people to think that I have to film a minute. You don't. You can make a great video that's 15 seconds long. Fantastic video. You don't have to make a video that has to be under a minute. Well, it's got to be under a minute. No, it doesn't. If it takes a minute and 10 seconds to, to really tell the story, then use the minute 10. You know, if you're repeating yourself, then you're killing yourself. And so there's a strategy to this. And also, I mean, let's be honest, you'll get better at telling facts quicker so that it, it won't take you as long because you'll get more comfortable and you'll be able to deliver it really quick. But don't get caught up on length. Go as long as it should be and don't go longer than it shouldn't be. <laughs> you're going to find a lot of stuff hits in that 30 to 45 second window, really. Because again, you're not trying to explain the whole rule book to them. You're trying to give them enough to call you. You want somebody to hear this and to go, crap, I need to lean on your expertise. Let me call you. Let me, let me touch base with you. You want an agent to look at this and be like, man, this guy knows what he's talking about. I can tell. I'm going to refer him clients. Good question. Does this make sense? Okay. So, you ready for next step? Yeah. Because here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this content list. We're going to build out five videos. And your team's going to help you. Okay? So we need five problems. Right? And we need five intros hooks. Okay? So we're going to turn the cameras off. You guys are going to brainstorm five problems, five intro hooks, and then we're going to film. Meaning you're going to film, you're going to deliver the intro. We're going to do it a couple times. We're going to do it a couple times, like so you get kind of relaxed. Okay. And then we'll hit the second half and then the close and we'll be with you the whole time. But this is going to be your chance to get some reps under your belt. But this, this team will help you come up with all this stuff so you're not alone. Make sense? All right. We're going to do the magic fist bump now. Magic fist bump? Doing it. Boom! I want you to explain it like I'm a person, which means as you're walking through it, you might say, so what I'm really trying to say is, or... Está en 700, ni siquiera en 650. Todavía podría ser calificado por un beta. We're, we're, we're back. <laughs> back to uh, the beginning. Back to the beginning, dude. So, did you have any clue what was going to happen today? I didn't. When this, this guy he sucked you he in? He didn't say anything. I'm pointing to Mario off camera. He's sitting over here. Don't, don't, yeah, ignore him. But he knows me and he's a reason behind it, so. Um, 
Well, okay, so first, um, dude, you worked hard today. You worked really hard today. You put like a, a real day of effort in. Are you, are you as tired as I am? <laughs> so let's debrief for a minute and, and, and then we'll go have some adult beverages. Like, uh, what did you expect when you first walked in here? What were you thinking? Was I thought happen? it was just a meeting with uh, realtors. <laughs> That's it. And what happened? Then I saw you and no, it was not true what you told me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, uh, what, what do you take from today? What do you remember? So, I mean, I know you're going to process a lot from this. There's a lot of stuff we're going to send afterwards, but like what, what, what's your, what's your There's take? There's still a lot to do from my end. Good. Like, you know, the two game of businesses and I have learned a lot that today as well. So it's step by step, but you know, if I follow what you're telling me, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to go into the path that we're trying to from the very beginning. Well, dude, let me encourage you, you know, that you're going to be successful no matter what, man, your heart, your intensity, your integrity, you know, everything I heard about your story, you come into America, all, all the things, man, like you're going to be successful. It's just use whatever is serving you at the time. You know, we talked about a ton of ideas today. Tons of stuff was thrown at you, and we're going to give you all that in writing so you can really digest it. But figure out what steps you can lean into and start taking, and you'll get to where you want to go faster. You know, it's not about doing everything. That's overwhelming. But I think from today, one of the objectives I had was to show you what's possible. You know, you've got an incredible heart for your clients. Um, I feel like there's a reason, I've said this several times to you today, but there's a reason why the hard loans find you. It's because you're the guy that can solve that problem. And you're the person who will step in and work on the customers who people step over and don't deal with. And that's gonna make you extremely successful. As long as you continue to spread your reach, yeah. the more people that get a chance to know you and know your heart and your yeah. dad jokes, the more people that are gonna want you to help them. What did you feel about uh, all doing all those videos? That I have to keep doing it because this is just the first video that I did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it was not the, my best me myself, whatever. Uh, but um, every time that I do a new one, it's going to be a better video. Yeah. And I don't know if I can get into the perfection, but I know that it will be it will be better. Well, when you watch some of them and we go through them again, you'll see when. I don't know how to describe it, but it was almost like when you let your guard down almost. When you just, you had, you had moments of relaxation on camera where you were just very, like, well-spoken, confident, the energy was there, and it was almost like when you weren't thinking about it. So that'll come with repetitions and practice. Um, what's, what's maybe one or two of your big takeaways from today? That is never enough. What are you doing? It is always something else to do. That's, that was the biggest takeaway. Like, do you think you're doing okay? You're thinking you're doing good, but then you realize that it is a lot, a lot to do. Well, the good news on that is that it's opportunity. Yeah. And the double good news is that the hard work and the uncomfortableness is what keeps other people away. Sure. And that's where I, you know, it's a, it's. It's lonely at the top sometimes because the top performers do things not everybody's willing to do. And you know, if you can really take bites at a time, get good accountability, get around a team that wants to come on the journey too, it'll get lighter, it'll get easier. But um, dude, I have no doubt that you're gonna have an incredible career in this space. Thanks. Just let your authentic self out as much as you can. I, I, I told him uh, I, on Fridays I need to see Dad Joke Fridays, and I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, that's, that's the stuff it. that's, like, let, let, that lets your smile out, like your personality yeah. out. Um, because the more you can let people in, the more business opportunity you'll have. Does that make sense? That's true. <clears throat> All right, man. Well, I cannot wait to see the next step of your journey, dude. You did it. You got through today. Now it's just tomorrow and the rest of your life. So yep. it's, it's going to be fun. I appreciate you, man. This is awesome. Thank you.
si deseas comprar una casa, pero todo tu... Top for our customers.